Well, huzzah, huzzah! I'll just throw back my legs and pollute my breeches with delight.
Is that that? No, I think you guys are just making stuff up. All right, all right. What is going on? What's up, Pipples? Hello. Look, we have a gin back. <laughs> and we have a new camera angle. I told you I was going to fix my camera, so now I'm staring at chat again. Life is good. I don't have to. I was having to look over here. Yeah. And back over here. And then back over here. And then back over here. It was not working. For I, me. Was gonna, I was going to say <clears> that seems not. It was not conducive yeah. to to enjoyable times for me. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Friday. Hi. Houdini7. Thank you. Sorry, Death Hashtag Art couldn't stay on. Death Art dropped by and uh, dropped a sub bomb on us and split. No. Oh. So if you're still here, Death, sorry you can't hang out. Says he's away for the weekend and people are staring at him funny with the music. <laughs> so there you have it. There you has it. A little bit this way. Team Jin in the house. Yes, she is. You weren't here the other day, but they were they were talking about twenty dollar wet willies again. Now that you can actually see me, yeah, I think Killing Time Painting mm -hmm. actually made a command <laughs> for it called exclamation point willy. So we got that going for us. That's great. Leave it to KTP. What's <laughs> happening, everybody? It is Friday. We're gonna give uh, Kenny and the crew a little bit of time to get in here. There it is. See, Willie. <laughs> Jesus. He's begging for it. He's begging for it. He's begging for it. <laughs> Hope everybody has had a wonderful week and that uh, it is winding down and heading into the weekend in the right way. I am tired. Not a bad way, but I'm beat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm beat. It's been a week. It's been a week. It's been a week for you. It's been a week. It's been a week. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. We were talking about it at dinner last night. She's got a lot going on at work. We got a lot going on at work around here. Obviously, we're there's just a lot going on. We're, we're just like you guys. We suffer the same, oh my God, the week's been a week. Yeah. Azrael, six months. Thank you, my friend. Mucho appreciado for that support. Welcome back. But we're going to be doing some cool stuff tonight. Uh, as you can see, we've got the Dust Tank Tactics Tank on the table again, but we're not going to be worried about uh, painting tonight. We're going to be showing you some really cool things with regard to creating uh, camo netting, camo tarps, uh, things that are really difficult to get in the world and, and scale that we work in. It's not impossible. There are some 35th scale military model companies that make uh, camo netting uh, that comes in either plastic that you have to heat and melt uh, or that comes in kind of a weird plasticky fabric thing. Um, and none of it ever, ever works right for me. So I've always for years and years and years made my own stuff. So I'm going to give you guys... Uh, that little piece of wisdom on how to make your own cool stuff. I whipped out a little uh, tarp, rolled up tarp for our dust tactics tank here. So uh, it's got, uh, it's made out of real fabric. So obviously it's got a nice fabric texture. And I'll probably lay it in on the top of one of these tanks or something like that on the side or figure out a spot that I didn't really mold this one particular. I'll show you about molding these things. But uh, I just did this one as a flat piece. Well, not flat. It's crumpled. But I did it so that I could add Why in, you, you know, any textured thing. Nicholas! Maybe it'll make you feel <laughs> Nicholas Pie, Thank what's you, going Nicholas. on? He's coming through with a pie. <laughs> right? But uh, obviously, I'm going to show you ways that you can mold it and shape it. Uh, we're actually going to make a barrel cover for this thing tonight. That's going to be one of the projects that we do. Uh, it, earlier in the week, somebody was saying, you know, it reminds them of a pin cap, right? This looks like a pin cap. It looks like a mark, an old yeah, marker cap. Yeah, 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 it does. For the end of a long week. <laughs> a little pie for the end of a long week. Nice. You are the man. Thank you so much. I like pie. It doesn't even have to be at the end of a long week. Pie is just good, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, delicious. So, yeah, so this one could go pretty much anywhere. We could strap it up on top. Well, that's actually kind of cool up top like mm -hmm. that. On top of the intake is not a bad gig. We could make something like that work have to figure out how to attach it, but I'm not mad at that. It's got those little uh, <coughs> crane points there that we could lash it into. So that might be kind of cool to have it be like that. Yeah, I'm thinking that might work. We could dump it up there. That would make more sense for an amphibious tank. That part's supposed to stay above water anyway. So that might be it. But uh, the goal is to be able to create some really cool <laughs> accessories that you don't get or can't find. And when you do, you get like a couple of tank kits will have like duffel rolls and bags and things like that. But they get really redundant because it's always the same sculpt. Uh, so here you can make your own thing. Um, so I'm going to show you all the parts and pieces and amazing things to do with that. And uh, we're going to go into then some more complicated things as well. Uh, but I'm going to hold that back for a little bit of a surprise. Show you what you can do with it after I, uh, after I show you the basics here. 
So Gouda stuffs. Again, we're gonna we're gonna do a barrel wrap, and I'm gonna show you how to make a bed roll slash tarp. You know, whatever you want. This winds up being. I mean, it's a it's a hard. It's not bendable, right? If I bend it, I feel like I'll break it right now. And of course, I just painted it up real quick with the airbrush. I've got to go back in and do detailing. I'll show you that how it takes paint and everything like that. But it's a perfect piece. It's can't clobber the microphone with it. But I handed it to Jen. She's like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" I was like, "Feel it." She's like, "What do you mean, feel it?" It looks. Like, I didn't know what it was. It looks like a cat turd or something. Well, so. <laughs> but the I fact mean, that I I'm knew, using, I knew what I was looking for the rope part yeah like because that was what we, we were, were talking about a yesterday discussion about the string and i needed to go get some string because the stuff that i had here wasn't going to work but uh, i didn't know what the rest of it was yeah so you can see uh we get by using natural components i get i'm using 100 percent cotton fabric so out of my fabric i get a fabric texture without having to worry about it i don't have to mold it in there or do anything like that it's going to give me the texturing that i need straight out of the gates uh, I'm using a very thick kind of embroidery string on here. Uh, so my rope looks like rope. So I don't have to worry about texturing any of that. Don't have to fight with any green stuff. There's no sculpting. You don't have to have any crazy skills to do this. It's literally, if you can tie a knot and get fabric wet, you can do this and, and rub glue on it. So the, if you follow us on our Facebook, I said today that on today's show, I was going to show you how to do some cool stuff for 28 cents. It might actually cost like a dollar is what I said, but. I feel like 28 cents was a good number. Go <laughs> <laughs> Maui Blood, what is going on, man? Darkness, what's happening? Darkness, I have not taken this this bracelet off ever, by the way. Yeah. Like, not once. It This thing is amazing. Yeah. Haven't had a single problem. I love it. I hear you have a sweet pie tool in the kitchen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jen was so funny. She's like, what is this for? <laughs> no, I knew what it was for. I didn't, I just didn't know if it meant something. <laughs> is there perhaps going to be any whip at the end of the night? There is. Yes. Vanilla Face, we will be doing whip at towards the end of the show. So we end at 8 p.m. Pacific. So probably about, depending on how much there is, I'll keep an eye on it. I've got it open right now, but I'm not sure where it stopped. Let me refresh it real quick. And I'll see. The last picture I see on here is of Romulan Ale beer, which is kind of cool. Maui bought 20 freaking dollars. What? That's it. We can eat tonight, baby. Uh huh. Oh, damn it! <laughs> it's not fun when you know, though. It's more fun when it's like... Well, but you can do it whenever you want to now. Yeah. I just know right now. See, you shouldn't have said anything. You shouldn't have been giving me the devilish look. See? You, you, that's on you. Ah, look at that look. <laughs> I am so doomed. I am so doomed. I was all like, my blood, you're the most awesomest ever. Now I hate you. <laughs> With the raw power of a thousand suns. <laughs> Rowmonger, what's going on? Yeah, the uh, the tank that we've got here is a Dust Tactics tank um, from Paolo Parente's Dust, which I, it was really, really cool to meet Paolo at the show at Adepticon. He came by the booth and hung out. Uh, because he had seen uh, the social media posts. He's very, very close to his game. He pays attention to the, the social aspects and all of that stuff. So he came by to check it out while I was painting it uh, in the booth. Actually, I wasn't really doing much painting in the booth at Adepticon, but I pretended. Not much. It sat there on did, camera. You did get a lot done, though. I got, I all, mean, the, I got all the camo spots yeah. on there, so that's actually okay. And I did the Desert Rat logo and the, the British logo. I did some stuff, but that all did happened like on, the, on the, like really on the last day. Yeah. I think between Saturday and Sunday. The other days, I didn't get much chance to paint. Um, but uh, I, I'm showing tonight how we can go in and do some really cool uh, textured fabric stuff, tarps, camo nets, things like that on the cheap to fit your specific tank. And I'm going to show you in a way that you're going to be able to make some really, really cool personalized stuff like just this simple tarp roll on a tank. Changes the look of the tank dramatically, uh, and it's not hard to do. I'm going to show you. So that's what we're doing. Oh, this is what we're doing? This is what we're doing. That's what we're doing. You stay in that seat over there. I don't trust you. <laughs> I know it's coming. I know. But I'll forget. She'll wait till I'm painting and... I, see, that's the thing, is that it has to be strategic because I don't want to mess you up. <laughs> Bastage. Camo Specs, what's going on? <laughs> Psychological torment. Exactly, <laughs> right? Exactly. It's like, how am I supposed to do this now? I'm all like, I can't pay attention to what I'm supposed to be talking to him about because I'm always looking, I'm like looking over my shoulder, I'm like, oh my God. 
All right, so here's our roll. I'm going to show you how to make this first. We're going to start there it with something like simple. A cat turd. Um, I'm <laughs> using uh, cotton fabric, literally 100% cotton. This is a cheapo El Cheapo bandana that I bought at the store, and uh, it's just white cotton, see-through, really not comfortable. I wouldn't like want to wear this. It's all itchy, right? But it has a good it has a good uh, texture to it because it is not super soft, right? For most of what I do at this scale, I'm looking for cloth that has that texture, you know, that's going to be a little bit, I, I wouldn't call this sheer, but obviously it's not opaque. You can see my fingers behind it. Uh, it is more sheer than say a normal t-shirt or something, right? Mm -hmm. It's weave is very loose uh, and you can see through it. That's going to guarantee you that you have that texture show up so that when you're done, you get you know, like on this bedroll or this tarp here, I'm gonna maintain all that texturing so that dry brushing is very easy. You know, it's gonna have the thread, the threadbare ends on it. It looks like a beat up tarp that's been in the desert in our case for quite some time there. You can see that texture really, really nicely oh, all through that. Even after here. applying uh, the, uh, the hardening glue over it, the texture still remains. There's the NLP crew. What's going on, Kenny? Mm -hmm. Welcome everybody. What is happening? I know there's more than 63 of you coming in. Welcome, everybody. 133. Tum, ta -tum. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful night. I'm Ke Jason. Ke Ke Rob, Ke Rob said playing with cat scat. Ca playing with what? Cat scat. Cat scat? Is that like cat poop? I don't know. Because it looks it like looks cat It looks like cat poop. poop. That's what I said earlier. It looks like <laughs> cat poop. Yeah, and I said, when, it's like when, a cat it, when you put it down and it was like zoomed out, I'm like, oh yeah, that really does look like cat poop. It's like a little shriveled up cat turd. <laughs> But it's a scale tarp, when you, I swear. When you look at it that way, you can tell. But when it's far away, it <laughs> Okay, maybe not. So, <laughs> welcome, everybody. I hope everybody's had a wonderful week. Hope you had fun watching Kenny over there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, that yeah. fuzzy fudge. <laughs> fuzzy fudge. That's what Rob the other day was trying to get the crowd's approval to eat some fudge that was in his fridge. And it looked fine until he like picked it up and it had like white hair on the bottom of it. I didn't know fudge could grow like white hair. <laughs> Kitty Roca. I love the command for yo dogs. <laughs> what? I know we all know so many of your yo dogs are but no good. But your yo dogs are no good here, sir. Yes! <laughs> we still love you, though. We do still love you, though. All right, okay, so we're going to we're gonna show one. you some various methods to use That's very uh, che El Cheapo productos. Uh, and uh, make some really, really cool stuff for your tanks. This could obviously be for anything. It could be on rhinos, on land raiders, on... <laughs> I feel like it was not quite the element of surprise I was like, hoping for. <laughs> that, was, that was like all the moisture in your mouth? At once? No. One of my shirts all nasty. <laughs> Probably shouldn't use my shirt to clean the wet willy out. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Maori Blood. Here, here. I have a guard. Oh. I have protection now. <laughs> I will have protection from the wet willies. You people. You. What do you mean by you people? You people. You people. You did this to me. <laughs> you did this to me. All right. <laughs> I have to have protection from the wet willies. We just redid our studio for anybody that's just joining us. Our, uh, our old studio at the old place uh, was like this. Our desks were side by side, so I could, you know, I could see her. And we, we stood right next to each other, and that became a thing. The whole, like, wonderful world of wet willies and gin and killing time painting. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so I built a barrier over the course of the last year and a half to where she was separated from me by the desks being face to face. Um, and so that made it to where she would have to run all the way around and I could usually see that. <laughs> She's not that sneaky. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so now I'm screwed. So, But now great. the way it's set up. Maui blood, great, thanks. <laughs> great, thanks. Now, now the way it's set up, yes, you can see all of our crap. <laughs> it's not but so yeah, bad. No, I did the shelf. Really look, really I did, look nice. what I did with yeah. the shelf. It looks really nice this way. We have paint. And look at we the shelf games. now. Yes. Likes us. Yes. Fuzzy fudge. <laughs> That's awesome. I put games in there, yeah. so it's kind of like a Where's Waldo. Nice. People can yeah. try to find out in over Jen's shoulder what's we in should, the freaking we should, case. Uh, we should mix it up once in a while and make it like a little game. The wizard is here. Oh, that's so good. 
<laughs> we've got the wizard watching in the background, right? So the wizard is watching, right? Mine's got, look at this. Everybody says my side doesn't look so good. My side's got all the store stuff. This is like a whole wall of product. It is. It really, it's because of the boxes, I bet. Oh, those? Yeah. Oh, well. I'm still working on it. It's a work in progress. You guys, give me, cut me a break. Cut me some slack. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maui said, OMG karma, I just spewed monster all over my keyboard and screen. Just, <laughs> just, just. <laughs> Voodoo Chow, what's going on? Chaos, Kev, what's going on? Houdini7 you need, said you need a pair of anti-gen earmuffs. <laughs> d oh! So new product, Wet Willy Guard. Wet Willy Guard. <laughs> Coming soon to slowfusegaming.com. Half chewed tootsie rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Shit guy, what's going on? Yeah, we've got more stuff here. I just kind of took all the boxes of stuff and threw them in the shelves because what was in the shelf behind Jen was not worth looking at. Yeah. So it was disaster. It was literal crap. It was like yeah. the garbage that I was cleaning off of our workstations to get the workstations up for streaming, and I was just shoving it in boxes. Yeah. So I changed that. I, I at least did that part today. All right, we're making we're making inroads here. Building. Anytime you blow up your entire broadcast studio, it's always a pain, especially with the amount of stuff we have. You know, because in, in our small studio, we run our entire store. And the stream, and all of the business art and all that stuff, because this whole well, you can't see my workstation anymore, but it's behind me. So anyway, it's crazy. We good, we good now. I'm like Wonka's candy shop. Yeah, yeah. My side, you guys, just if you could actually see what was on all and how far the shelves went back. This is the drool side. <laughs> All right, so uh, like I said, what we're going to be doing is taking this cotton fabric, and I'm going to be showing you some neat tricks on making uh, tarps, uh, camo netting, you name it, anything that you'd like to put together, right? So like if I take this Blood Angel Rhino, right, you can imagine you can make a tarp that would work on it. You know, I think, the, I think that the rhinos used to come with like a plastic tarp of some sort, right? But just being able to make your own makes all the difference when you're doing vehicles, um, whether it's... Uh, in diorama form, or whether it's just as accessories to go on the vehicle, no matter what, it, it works wonders. So, 13 months, still one more name. Not a possibility. Not a possibility. He's a liar. He's a liar. Thank you so much. All right. So what I'm going to do, uh, like I said, this is a two dollar, literally a two dollar and nineteen cent at uh, Michaels, uh, hundred percent cotton piece of crap uh, bandana. I don't know why they sell them. I think they're supposed to be bejeweled yeah. or something. They were in the bejeweled section. Yeah. The you, bejaz you, bedazzling, you. the jadaz, jadrat. Paint on them and jadrat. stencil on them. There was a bunch of really yeah. old ladies there like yeah. with glitter glue. Yeah. yeah. I was not one of them. Puffy paint. I think maybe. they would have accepted me into their group, though. I think they probably would have I think they would. Him. I had to ask some women about the thread. You'd be surprised. Sometimes he's a just, he, he charms the old ladies. <laughs> Where, oh, it was when we went to Seattle for my birthday. We were supposed to talk about that. We were at the... <laughs> We were at, sitting at the hotel eating breakfast, and there were these old ladies, older ladies. They weren't like elderly, but they oh, were we talked. Older, we talked with them, and all they morning. just couldn't get enough of Jason. Yeah. Jen doesn't talk to people, so I have I, to. So I the first to people. Thing, <laughs> so the, the first thing I do is I cut the edges off. You might have noticed I just cut the seam off. Uh, this is the hemmed edge. Even though the hem, you might think to yourself, "Wow, it'd be really cool to do like a tarp that already has a hem on it." The hem is usually way out of scale. The stitching on it is going to be crazy, so to leave it is, in my opinion, not worth it. So I generally always hashtag don't play gray. <laughs> What's going on? Thanks for the follow. <laughs> All right, so I cut the edges off, and then the next step is to just figure out how long and wide you want your tarp. Uh, for me, uh, or how thick you want the roll in the case of doing something like what we're doing here. Uh, and then you just cut it to width. It's It can't get any easier than this, guys. Just make a cut. You don't have to worry so much about the straightness of your cut. If you're doing stuff like military bed rolls and things like that, having the natural uh, garbage edges can help sometimes. I'm going to throw that right there. I'm going to forget where that is. That's great. <laughs> All right, so now I just got a piece of cloth. Don't worry about doubling it up. You don't have to for something like this, right? What we're going to do right now is recreate this tarp or cat turd. Turd. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it does look like a cat turd. <laughs> Next thing you're going to want is a tray of agua. All right, so I'm just going to get it wet. Bingo, super easy. Douse it. Wad it up. Soak it in water. Take the water out all over your computer like I just did. It's always helpful. 
Computers work good underwater, right? I feel like that's a thing. Yeah. 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 Not a big deal. They're waterproof. Not a big deal. No big deal. Soak right. it in rice. You you want it to be uh, a little bit damp, but not flooded. So, you know, you don't want to dry it out before you go to the next step, but you want to make sure that it's just damp and that it's not like dripping water all over the place. Okay. Um, and there, bingo. Now, it's got really rough edges as you get it wet. Obviously, because we cut all of the hem off of it, it's going to fray. That's okay. Don't worry about it right now. We can tidy that up at the end. But we got that nice wrinkle pattern in there. And then just simply, I'm going to start rolling it. I'm telling you, I, this is the easiest thing in the world. Out of that one $2 freaking bandana, you can make more things than you can shake a stick at. All right. All right, so then just roll it up like so. And now for the string, the stuff that I bought also came from Michael's, uh, and this is at Michael's just called Cotton Pearl String, 100% cotton again. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't have a weight. I would say that this is probably about five pound cotton string. Um, and the reason that's important is because of the diameter, right? If you go to like 10 pound, 10 pound gets uh, thicker, so on and so forth. I feel like, you know, if we're looking at miniatures the size of what we're normally dollar, dealing with dollar, that the five dollar. pound tends to look like a heavy mm -hmm. rope buzz a chuckle <laughs> buzz a chuckle <laughs> thank you for the bits right it tends to look like a heavy rope uh as opposed to uh you know going much bigger is going to start looking a little bit out of scale uh unless you have a specific story you're trying to tell with a, a ultra thick tow rope or something like that all right so i'm going to take this Pull that end around until I get the length I want. I always pull way more than I need because I'm a real ham-fisted at trying to tie this stuff in miniature. Just cut it. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what color you get. I got brown because it is going to stand out against the white. I should have gotten black or something because I'm going to paint it. Right? It paints up just with everything else. You're only looking for the texture of rope. That's the only thing you care about. Right? Now, for me, I generally don't want to see um, the the spot where it kind of laps over here at the end if you do it's no big deal but for me i don't so i'll put the string there and then i'll wrap around both directions and then i'm just going to tie that off with a double knot or a square knot it's just called a square knot i feel like this is a square knot and you can do as many times as you want i'm just going to stick with twice it meaning wraps. Obviously, you could wrap this thing to where it was all wrapped up in rope if you wanted. That's the cool thing. You can do whatever you want. But all you need is a nice, fast square knot like that. Pull it tight. Cut it off however you want. I usually don't want to see the tails of the knot hanging off, but if you want to, you can cut it however long you want, obviously. All right. Bingo. Now, what I want to do before I tie the other end is kind of work on this one and kind of smash it together. If okay. I want it to I can't be, really see what you're doing. If, what's that? If oh, we're sorry. To. Yeah. If I want to start now to kind of deform the shape, right? Then I'll kind of scrunch it and cut another piece of string. I'm losing the end of the string because I'm bad. I always hate pulling these things apart for the final time because then I feel like it just turns into like a big rat's nest of yeah. <laughs> bad hairdo. So I'm always trying to keep it to where I can... Just pull from an end. Yeah, pull from, but they don't do it. it the, the Both of the ends are like in the center and they make uh. you just kind of pull out to the outside on this brand. All right, so again, just cut myself a long piece and repeat. I'm just gonna tie this off down on this end, wherever you want. It's all up to you. I'll try not to be annoying with the crackling. Oh, are you because so oh, you're crackling again? Everybody's gonna be like, "What is I'm Jenna doing?" I'm unwrapping paint tubes, so she's working. Sorry, she's working. We got the new uh, single paint tubes in. 
if you've ever bought single brushes from us in the past, they didn't come in the hard plastic tubes like the sets did. That all changes now. Our tubes are better than Winsor Newton. But we have to unwrap them. But we have to unwrap them. <laughs> well, I'm sure they do too. They just somebody they have a machine. For it. And they have a machine for that. We're not we're not big enough to have machines do our work for <laughs> I'm us. I'm the honey. machine. <laughs> You're the machine. Sweatshop. All right. Bah. Hardest thing is getting rid of the garbage. All right, now is the time where, let's say we wanted to drape this over something. Let's grab, let's grab a tank. Let's see oh, if I maybe wonder. I'm this guy. What's that? Can you guys see Bella? Probably, yeah, <laughs> laying on the floor back yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> dog looking. cam at the end of the hall. <laughs> That's the, she sits by the shipping station all the time. And all the, yeah, all the packaging uh, stuff. Well, this is all flat. This doesn't Commencer. give us anything unique to do here. I guess we could maybe wrap it around the, the couple of like that, maybe. Something like that, if we wanted to. We could try to make that work. It's going to be rough. Since I didn't plan this, I would have really needed that to be longer. Right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to build it so that it sits around the, uh, the cupola, the commander's cupola like this. Right. So I'm going to just kind of start it. And then I'm going to grab some of my trusty cling wrap. Look at this. More stuff that you have in your house. <laughs> right. I told you, everything you're going to see tonight is on the cheap. I was not lying. All right. So we want to cover the model. This allows you to do what I'm about to do to any model at any stage of completion. Like this Rhino is done, right? But I want to be able to come back and maybe add this on, right? So I am going to shape it. The cling wrap is going to prevent any of the moisture or the glue that I'm about to do on it from getting down on there. And now we grab our Mod Podge. This is the most expensive thing we'll be showing today. I think Mod it's Podge like in the 8 fluid house is like $4.99. Yeah. yeah. So this is the most expensive thing we're using here. Uh, you could just use PVA glue, just white glue uh, with a little bit of water uh, to water it down is fine. I'm just using Mod Podge because it's easy. Right. And just a crappy big brush that I use, just a big synthetic brush. Right. Get my brush a little wet. I don't want it super wet, not like I'm normally painting. But I don't want the Mod Podge so thick that it uh, gets rid of the texture on the fabric, right? And now I'm literally just gonna paint the glue on this thing. Right where it sits. And again, now you can see why I needed to make sure we use the cellophane or the glad wrap on the tank, because obviously you wouldn't be able to do this if you didn't. Okay. Now what I need is a good way to hold this, and I'm thinking, what could I use here? Maybe the, what if I pinch this around? That's gonna be the hardest thing, is kind of building a jig to get this to wrap around the hatch the right way. If I could set something heavy on the edges, perhaps. We're going to enlist miniatures from the table here. And another miniature from the table. Hey, our Space Marine. Very fitting. These miniatures I don't care about, but you could obviously wrap them in cellophane as well if you needed to. But if you're going to make a shape where you need to pin it or have it not move, you're going to have to have a better way than this. This is a bad plan here <laughs> to kind of get it to sit in the shape that I want. All right, I'm going to leave that guy off. You guys understand what's going on. All right. Can pull 
hold the maybe the force of the saran wrap will hold if I do that right yeah that'll work just let the saran wrap kind of pull it together All right one last little run of Mod Podge where I've got these nice folds in it that I want to make sure I keep. And bingo. Now you can set that aside to dry. All right? And it will dry in that shape, and that's how you get stuff like hey, this somebody done. Somebody likes us. Right? Piptaru, what's going on? That's the way you'll get stuff like this to hold its form, right? All of these wrinkles and stuff, I just scrunched it together, did the Mod Podge on it, and then set it, I set this one between two paint pots, right? So when it was, it was also sitting on free, it wasn't on a tank, it was sitting on the, uh, the cellophane. And then I just put, after I scrunched it together, I put it between two paint pots to keep that fold in there. Uh, it doesn't take very long to set up so that it, you know, maintains its shape. It takes about an hour or so for it to stiffen up enough to where you can start painting it but it's not a long process so you can be doing this and you can move on and do another one and on down and on down and that'll be fine so we'll give that a time to uh dry off to the side i'm gonna set that back over there by you thank you for the sub shogoth shogoth thank you all right and bingo that will turn into a tarp molded to a shape that you don't get on a sprue which is super nice And now, I want to show you something else. If you want to do some complex things. <laughs> Kev Rob wants to know if the neighbors know what we did to their cat. No. No. All right. <laughs> so now, what if you want to do something bigger with a little bit more shape and texture to it? Okay. So here we've got another Dust Tactics tank. This is one of the Axis tanks. I haven't painted it or done anything. It's a tarp. <laughs> What's going on? Thank you so much for the two months. Okay. So uh, another Dust Tactics walker. Uh, one of the Axis sides. Uh, it's it's actually this is a super heavy I think because it's got two like huge flat cannons on it. Um, but I wanted to do. I had just an idea for the show to do kind of a, a camo tarp on top. All right, so you can imagine building a diorama with this might be really cool. Uh, I could do this. I haven't chosen this. a color, but I could do this in the snow or anything like that. Oak Sage, thank you so much. What's going on? Um, you know, I could do this as a snow deal and we can paint the tarp really cool and basically make it look like the tank can disappear into the terrain. But this is done the exact same way I just showed you for the bedroll. It's just not rolled up and tied. Okay, so this is now, I've already primed it with black Steinal Res primer. I can paint it just like a model when I'm done, right? Everything is already set to go. And it's now, even though it's thin and it's not, I mean, it's fabric, so it's not gonna break, but it feels brittle, right? But it holds its shape, right? I can pull the, the shape of it and it snaps back to where it was, right? And so now it's basically a part of the model and I can just snap it right back on there. And I've got it to where <laughs> it goes down in the recesses perfectly. It doesn't stand up off the model at all. Right? Drapes over the edge. It's got a lot of really good detail to it. Obviously, it's the exact same fabric that we just used. I'm using that $2 freaking bandana for all of this. Right? And there's still tons of it left. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, this is three by three square. I mean, our, our scale is so fine that we can use this material for a long time. And the bandana itself is probably a two foot by two foot bandana, uh, or at least 18 inches by 18 inches. So you're going to get a lot of work out of it, All right? So something like this now, you can airbrush, dry brush it because it has a lot of texture to it. But to set it up, same kind of thing. And we're going to make one to show you, All right? So the first step here is to start with our cellophane. Well, just because we're working with a bigger area, so I'm just going to prep the area first. Thank you. 19 freaking months, lying liar who lies. <laughs> LT pretends that he's actually liked us for 19 he months. He said I can't think of anything that I've done for 19 months straight. <laughs> must be something good. Thank you, my friend. Thank you rule. You. you rule, LT. LT has literally, yeah, he's been around since before since the, the beginning. beginning. Since before the beginning, right? All right. So I'm going to wrap this and prep it first. Now on something like this, the shape of this model is peculiar in that it has these very deep recesses uh, where the gun sponsons or 
you know, the gun sit aside the main chassis on this thing. So you just need to make sure that you're shaping the uh, the cellophane a little bit because the cellophane ha it's a light it's a very light material obviously, but it also has enough weight to it that it will pull your fabric in weird ways. So I just want to make sure that I shove it down into all the crevices, right, and try to stick it to itself where I can so it holds that shape. These are not nearly as bad as the bigger ones. Okay, good. I'm glad you like them better. <laughs> For me, the first couple of them were such a hassle that I was like, yep, not interested <laughs> in those at all. All right. Well, it's not. All right. Greenleaf says hi. Greenleaf, what's happening? <laughs> All right, so now we're cutting another piece off. And uh, another thing I can show you, uh, if you don't, if you want something that's more of a camo net, um, I use this. Again, super cheap. These are just sterile pads. Latex-free sterile gauze pad from the drugstore. Uh, you can usually buy them in a cheapo box of a billion <laughs> for like a couple dollars. Um, and again, it's just a cotton pad for injuries but it's going to give you a much thicker uh, look. So um, let's use that, as a matter of fact, and show you the difference. You know, this one's got a lot of square folds in it. I like the bigger ones so that you've got area that you don't have to mess around with. I might not use this. But this you, would use, you would use some, if it were flatter, you would use that for the same thing that you use the bandana for? Yeah. When you want to do like a large, you can roll this too. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you can't. Uh, it's really just a matter of, do you want it to look more like a net? Because this obviously has a very wide yeah, yeah, yeah. thread to it, or uh, you know, uh, what would you uh -huh. call it? Lattice like to it, right? Yeah. Weave, uh -huh. uh, as opposed to the denser of yeah. you know the other cotton that you can't yeah. really see through and looks more like maybe canvas tarp. And right? if you stretch this out, does it like stretch it and make it look more like a net? Um, if you stretch it in direction, it will open that pour up, but if you stretch it too far, it will tear. Oh, okay. uh, it's not real. The way that they do these uh, gauze pads so that they can be absorbent, right. they're not just woven. They're like cotton, mm -hmm. like cotton swab almost. Uh -huh. right? They're pretty strong this direction, but if I pull it widthwise to make the holes open more, yeah. it'll start gapping okay. those holes really crazy. Let's try to use this and see if it gets rid of. Just understand that I would normally look for the ones that are, they sell them in like the three and the four inch gauze pads. Those are better for what we do because it gives you the ability to cut out the part you need from in between the folds. Um, the square folds can cause you a little bit of problem. But let's go ahead and cut this and uh, let's leave. Maybe Greenleaf, I don't think he was paying close enough attention because I think he would have known what you really said. Oh, I know. <laughs> see? So, <laughs> so yesterday's news. <laughs> right, so again, I'm just going to cut it to whatever that is, three and a half by three and a half square or something like that. And again, get it wet. I'm just going to dunk it in my water. Now the gauze is going to get a little bit harder to work with than the solid fabric. It likes to stick to itself a little bit more. And then again, you don't want it to drip. So I'm going to wring it out. And I'm going to pick it apart. Yeah, I was afraid that like some of those seams won't go away, but that's all right. And I'm just going to kind of lay it catty corner, just create a kind of a cool dimension to it on the model. Right. Now, none of these fabrics are very heavy. So like I said, if you if you tug on the on the cellophane, it will make it to where the fabric itself won't hang flat just due to gravity because there's not enough weight. So that's why you're always going to have to be positioning the cellophane along with the fabric. And it's another reason why I use the clean wrap because you can kind of wrap it around the model and onto itself. And, uh, and of course, it doesn't matter if the model's painted or not. So I'm just going to grab a couple of brushes so I can start poking the fabric into the recesses that I need. Right. And I'll kind of use the paintbrush to hold, if I've got it down in one recess on one side, hold it there while I take the other brush and kind of work it into the opposite side. And just try to find all the edges of the model that you want. 
all out. Obviously you don't, in most cases, want it to lay completely flat. You just want to find those wrinkles and that general shape of the model to mold to. Right. And right now I'm just looking to make sure I've got the basic shape set up and we'll keep working it as we put the Mod Podge on it too. All right, but that looks pretty good right there. All right, you can see how I've got it dipping down into these recesses on the gun sides, which is really the detail on this model that sticks out across the surface on the top. Perfect. Get our big ugly brush again. Again, just want to get the brush damp, not a whole lot of water in it. Our Mod Podge. Mod Podge doesn't like to keep the cap in the cap. No. That little cardboard thing. <laughs> I feel like those things are useless. All right. And just go to town. On something that has a wide weave like this, you might want to thin your Mod Podge down just a little bit more, like by keeping the brush a little damper, right? Kind of stipple it to make sure that you don't gum up any of the holes in the material. But again, you don't want to have it too wet because it won't hold the shape, it won't dry the same. You'll be putting 80 million layers on, <laughs> so on and so forth. I'm concentrating on unwrapping. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back G. my Finnegan. legs and pollute my britches with Thank delight. you. Five months. Five freaking months. Thank you, G. Finnegan. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lack of green screen is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we decided that it was uh, time for the green screen to go the way of the buffalo so that we could gain our wall space back. Right. Now the Mod Podge is going to help maintain its shape even though it's not dry because it just adds enough weight to keep the, uh, the cellophane from kind of poking and moving on its own. Because right? the cellophane will kind of want to move and expand if you don't if it doesn't stick down but you can see just by adding the mod podge on this side now that side drapes all the way down and i've actually got like a really cool wrinkle right here in it what is this model so i'll normally let this is a dust tactics uh koenig something or other uh, koenig's luther it's like a axis super heavy tank wargaming lobby what is happening But this could be a, a Land Raider, anything. The, the GW tanks are a little less hey, neat across the top of their surface. So I chose this one because it has more detail. Right. Carl, what's going on? Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, everybody. All right. But I showed you earlier how, you know, like the, the bed rolls and the, the, uh, the rolled up tarp and all that are great on GW tanks. They just don't have as much cool detail to be able to form. And I really wanted to show you guys the link that you can go to to get this stuff to uh, kind of mold itself to your uh, to your model. If you've ever done any fiberglass work, this is not much different than doing fiberglass. Um, I used to make stuff out of fiberglass, and in order to do it, you would lay your fiberglass netting down, and then over the top of it, put the resin, and you would paint the resin right over the top, just like what I'm doing here. So this is not a uh, unique so to speak, method of creating things like this. Uh, paper mache, very, very similar method, right? Where you lay the paper strips down and then put the the sealant, the glue, the whatever it is. Mod Podge. Mod, Mod Podge, basically. <laughs> All over the top of it. The key is don't <laughs> forget the freaking cling wrap. You'll hate yourself if you put Mod Podge all over your model. So just don't do it. These 
these damn guns. I can take them <laughs> out, but it doesn't look half as cool. With the guns not on the front. Of course, right now it doesn't look like much of anything at all. It looks like lunch. It looks like lunch? You know, like a sandwich wrapped up in cellophane or something. Oh. Something you'd pack in your lunch. Maybe not. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it looks like lunch? <laughs> My as soon as you said that, I'm like, yeah, are not shaped like probably that. not really like lunch, <laughs> but you get my drift. You see where I was going with that? No. No, not really. Not really. Not really. But I love you anyway. <laughs> it's a good thing you're cute. <gasps> Make sure I've got every surface coated really well. Looks like I do. Maybe a little bit right down in here. This is going to look really good with the gauze. The netting on this, I think, is going to be perfect. The scale of the gauze I found, no matter what, I can pretty much just walk into the drugstore and buy sterile gauze, and the, the scale of it is going to be perfect for what we're working in. Anywhere from 148 to 135th, the kind of scales that our miniatures and military models and stuff like that come in is going to be damn near perfect right so that looks pretty good i feel like i've got a good layer of it everywhere but i want to make sure that now i go back with the brush hilts and force it down into those nooks and crannies as best i can because just the aspect of putting the mod podge on has now lifted some of it i could tell as it was going so just kind of work it around so that it doesn't have you don't want there to be in my opinion, like an area underneath where there would be like a big bubble of open air, right? Because you want to have the appearance of weight on your cloth and that it actually will drape. Now, right now I'm putting pressure down on this top so that as I move this, what it looks like as our bottom or right side of this thing, right? That it doesn't lift the other side that I did work on already. So then I'll move back here and brace it. And I'm moving the fabric towards this way, like from out here in, as opposed to trying to pull from over here since that other side's already kind of dipped down. <laughs> Drac, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? Drac said, as a teacher, why is it my almost three-year-old can say purple, but says re and not tree? <laughs> You got me. Seems natural. <laughs> I'm going to go with three. All right. Bingo. Done deal. And again, I, you know, not only is this very inexpensive method to make really cool stuff, it's really fast. All right. So I can, if I do this right, and don't mess up the cellophane, get you a better angle so you can see how that sits in there, right? It drapes over the forward machine guns. It drapes over the side guns. It's got a lot of weight to it, right? It drapes right down the sides. It doesn't bow out. It drapes right down the back and has a really cool wrinkle back there. I always let the wrinkles just kind of go with it because I'm always doing stuff like, you know, grim dark and uh, World War II beat up kind of stuff. So I like weathered to some extent. And so I think that's pretty perfect. So again, now you just wait, you play the waiting game, right? Set that aside in a safe spot, which is probably not where I just put it. So I'm probably gonna wanna use my palette as we start painting the other tarp, right? LT, that's a really good answer. Matter of fact, what's that? It makes sense. Um, LT said that because tree requires teeth movement and sounds, whereas purple is just lips. Tree, purple. Yeah, maybe so. Huh? Tree is like that Sense. CH almost, that ch uh -huh. ch tree. Here we go. Linguists Anonymous. <laughs> T's, R's, and L's are some of the hardest to pronounce, which what is why purple is, is surprising. <laughs> Sergeant Kronos, what other materials do you think you could use for this? Um, I have done it with uh, paper towels. Um, let's rip off a paper towel and I'll show you that real quick. Uh, if you have heavy duty paper towels, uh, as long as they don't have a real flower, it, it, you want the, the cheap heavy duty ones 
that don't have a flowery floral pattern in most cases. This one has kind of a weird dot pattern for absorption, but we'll just go ahead and try it anyway, right? Paper towels, Kleenex, believe it or not, will work. Um, anything that will give you a quote unquote fabric texture that has a woven texture to it, um, when you get it wet, right? So I'll just cut this real quick, right? And uh, get it wet. Right. Shop towels? Shop towels will work, yep. The blue shop towels work great. Um, as long as, again, they don't have a, a pattern to them. Some of them have like a diamond pattern to them that will be hard to get out. Sometimes it'll disappear enough. Like you'll see on this one, once you absorb the water into it, the pattern disappears pretty much on this paper towel. Uh, you want it to be heavyweight so that as you're messing with it, it doesn't tear. Uh, the one thing I will say about paper towels, shop towels, Kleenex, things that aren't 100% cotton woven fabric um, that are meant for fabric use is that they will have a tendency to tear and become... Uh, the Mod Podge process of this makes them brittle, right? I showed you, you know, the our little cat turd piece is a solid thing now, right? It's a, it's a cat it's turd. basically like plastic now. Um, if this were not fabric and I bent it or applied pressure, the paper towel stuff will break. It will literally break in half because it's not meant to be a fabric, right? It's a disposable deal. So you got to be just a little bit more careful with the paper towel and stuff. Let me get uh, some more cling wrap going here. I wonder if a t-shirt would have enough texture. Uh, hmm. Soft cotton, I'm not a big fan of. That's why I always stay with really cheap cotton. Yeah. as opposed to t-shirts that are soft and meant to be worn. Um, you know, like the bandanas are better. They start off really stiff because then the, the texture hangs out. The Mod Podge is going to stiffen whatever you have. So if you have an old t-shirt laying around, you know, like the t-shirt's got enough good texture to it that it there's no reason why not to, you know. You might Anything not works. see the, you know, like on the one, it looks like almost like a burlap right. tart, but you, you might not get that texture from a t-shirt. Right, exactly. Right, but paper towel, same exact method. I wet the paper towel. Let's say we wanted to do a long tarp roll out of this thing, right? We're just gonna roll the paper towel up. I'm just having to be a little bit more careful with it because I don't want it to tear as I go. Whereas with the cotton, I could just kind of wing it because I knew that nothing was gonna happen. Right. So one more name had said, because um, LT was talking about, you know, you uh, used to teach skiing to adults and kids. There are a lot of fine motor movements that kids just can't do until they get older. So you have to do different things for younger kids. So one more name said, this stream is becoming too intellectual. Yes. And then he said, you're making fake cat turds? I take back what I just said about the stream becoming too intellectual. I'm back in. <laughs> Told you. We'll win you over. Just it give us time. It always comes back to poo. That's right. It always right. comes back to poo on Fridays. All right. So we'll do the same thing here. We're going yeah, to tie with, one in. Check with your your wife, your girlfriend, whatever, before you start cutting up any fabric that you see laying around. Because it might be her... Pshaw! You know, her, Pshaw! You know, her, favorite, uh, her favorite aunt's, you know, vintage hanky or something. Pshaw! A little, a little upset. Tell her to get over it. You started putting Mod Podge all over it, using it to cover up your models. Tell her to get over it. <laughs> you can tell them. Fuse said, get over it. <laughs> I'm going to have like divorce attorneys calling yeah. me. We would like to, uh, to subpoena you. That. Okay, so here again, as I'm doing my tie off, I'm going to have to be a lot more gentle with this because if I pull this too tight, it will literally cinch itself through the paper towel and lop off the head, right? Like a guillotine. So I'm just going to pull tight enough to get to where I've got that cinch in the fabric where it makes that pinch to look like it's tied. Right? And then I'm going to tie it off again. Whereas, again, the only difference here is that I was not really thinking about being careful with the, the uh, bandana cloth. And since you can get cheapo white bandanas probably by the dozen on Amazon for like a dollar, I just stick with that. But in a pinch, paper towels, Kleenex. I've used paper towels on dioramas that I entered in contests. And, you know, they work great. Um, all right. So let's say on this one. Hey, um, somebody likes us. Hey. One journey one. One journey one, what's going on? Journey. Oh, this thing is all dusty. That's all right. Take our cellophane. <laughs> and let's, uh, you know what? Let's just make this to go on this Land Raider here. 
right? and we'll just do it as a long folded tarp on uh, one of these sides. I guess we really only have this one side, huh? Right. Or, I don't know that you would drape a tarp across the back. It would be really neat. We could drape it in to this kind of area between there, but I don't know if that really makes sense. What I was thinking we'd do is go ahead and tie this off on this other end. I waste so much string too because I can't tie if I cut it to the right length. Like I just lose my mind trying to figure out with my dumb fingers how to tie it off. And again, I'm only wrapping around twice. There's no rhyme or reason to that. You can wrap it around a dozen times if you want, if you want to have more of the quote unquote rope showing. That's your choice. Your choice. And this is just cheapo paper towel right here. So you want cheap hobby hacks. We went from 28 cents to, this is probably a dime worth of stuff that we're gonna use on this now. If that. Right. So again, we've got this thing here. All right. Well, let's bend it. All right. But now we can have it be like a, a large rolled tarp. Right, we can kind of scrunch it if we want. Scrunch those ends to give it that folded packed fabric kind of feel. Because it's wet, it won't expand until it dries back out to its natural, you know, tubular form really. Right? So we can have this shape happen. And I really like to kind of just press the ends in like that. Give it that kind of accordion fabric fold thing going on there. And now Mod Podge time. I always call it Mod Podge. It's Mod <laughs> Podge. Not that anybody's gonna get mad at me, I don't think, but still. The Mod Podge purists. Will the Mod Podge purists out there are gonna, gonna be gonna like, come Fuse? after you. Fuse? You're never gonna hear the end of it. This is our life, and you are not taking it seriously. It is Mod Podge. Um, gotta be sure that you get down into the sides if you wanna have all those wrinkles maintained. You gotta get the inside of them and everything. Go right over the rope. Hole nine. Don't worry if you start to expand the shape a little bit, you're gonna go back and re shape it after you get the Mod Podge on it anyway. So if you have to kind of expand it out to get the Mod Podge into the folds, it's not a big deal. Right? Make sure that you dab some in the ends. Usually what happens when I teach people this, I've done this face to face in some classes a long time ago, and it was funny that you would see people's eyes light up and they would spend like a whole weekend <laughs> making more fabric things Accessories. than you can imagine, you know, more than you'd ever use just because it's such a fun kind of, it's crafty. Yeah. Right. And like you're seeing me do, you can go back to your old armies and tanks and do this stuff because you don't need to have done it early on, right? I mean, this Land Raider's done. This is Mike C's Land Raider for his Blood Angels. And it can literally, just because the beauty of cling wrap, I'm not gonna hurt the model at all. And I can shape it to complex shapes. The cling wrap isn't thick enough to cause me any problems. In most cases, I guess you could get some ultra detailed 15 millimeter model that you're trying to do this on and the cling wrap might make it a hassle, but I don't feel like that's a thing. Uh, Aries Apollo said, can you use that 
cordage with some Mod Podge to create a large coiled rope detail. Or yes. Do you just coil it and fix it to the model. Yep. Coil it up, Mod Podge it, anything you want. Again, you don't have to use Mod Podge. You can use PVA white glue with various amounts of water uh, to thin it out. Mod Podge is basically just like that. It's just a little bit easier to use. So I choose it. Right. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go in and kind of re form my shape here, scrunch my ends a little bit more, and bingo. And that I'll have a nice folded long tarp. So hopefully your minds are going crazy with all the things that you can make happen because you can see very easily the shapes you can make. We just made that out of a damn paper towel. That's the paper towel. That's the same paper towels I clean my brushes on. That's all I just pulled a paper towel off the roll. Cheapo, I don't know. These probably come from the grocery store, mm -hmm. right? They're the ones we use in the kitchen too. Yeah, so just cheapo household paper towel. Um, and the only thing to watch out for, like I said, is it will be more brittle. Um, you run the risk if you run like thin flaps of fabric, like if you have the open edge of this tarp has a thin flap of fabric on it. Once it all dries and sets up, if you go to paint it and you're rough, you can chip that off of there like, you know, like very, very thin sheet plastic or something. I mean, it, it will break because it's paper towel that you've gotten wet and, you know, it's meant to be biodegradable possibly if you buy paper towels that are you know recycled and who knows mm -hmm. nowadays with all the paper goods so just be careful but once you've mod podged it once you've painted it once you've sealed it with uh you know dull coat or whatever sealer you use as a top coat when you're done with your model it will last as long as the model lasts as long as you get it to that point uh and aren't rough with it you know because it will chip but now this will hold you notice it's holding its form without having to worry about it the mod podge is holding it's not wanting to spread back apart if you did a big heavy bundle and it looked like it was spreading again you could just put two things or clamp it or tie it loosely uh, with another piece of the string you could tie this and tie it to where the ends came together tight and then at the end just cut that piece off just do that at the end after the mod podge is applied don't mod podge that last string put it on there cinch it and then cut it at the end so you can make all sorts of comp complex shapes that way. I would not use toilet paper. I think it's too thin. It would like disintegrate. Toilet paper is meant water. to dissolve instantly. So I've never tried toilet paper. Uh, Kleenex is the closest that I would say I've used to toilet paper. Uh, and that's only because that's how I learned. Honestly, I learned to uh, using Kleenex. Back in the day, Kleenex was not a pleasant experience, though. Like when I was eight, nine, and ten years old, Kleenex would make your nose hurt. Yeah, it was a little, hurt, a little rough. A little, a little we didn't have like puffs today. Yeah. We didn't have the the lotion Moisten, infused, the aloe puffs infused. And, <laughs> it was literally, tissue. yeah, it was literally not good stuff. Like you 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 get done blowing your nose, and you're like, I don't want to do it yeah. again. My nose isn't red because I'm sick. My nose is red because I have to use that damn freaking Kleenex. Uh, Taz out. Can you use this for flames of war tanks? Definitely. Yeah, you can use it for smaller scale tanks. Uh, realize that anytime your scale goes down, and I apologize, I didn't see it earlier, Taz, when you asked if I do paint a lot of flames of war. I have not painted flames of war in a long time. Um, I usually work at that uh, 148 scale, like our models for Warhammer uh, and, you know, Dust, the, the Dust Tactics model that we've got here that we're painting again, you know, it's like 148 scale. Uh, it's the scale that I'm the most happy painting in because it just gives me a lot more detail. Uh, and bits and bobs to paint. Uh, but Flames of War is awesome. Uh, I love it. And you can definitely do this. Just realize as your scale goes down, you're going to want to look for either fabric that has a much tighter weave to it because the stuff like what we're doing here, right, with the camo net style, this on Flames of War, those holes are going to appear much, much larger. So you just have to be thinking about... Now, there is camo net that has much larger holes. Like a man can put a hand through the gaps in the camo net and they would then drape leaves and branches through it. So it would, it would still work. You just have to know in your head that that's what you're looking for. So like if you saw this and you said, oh, the scale of the hole opening to that tank size looks great and you took this exact same cloth and put it in uh, Flames of War, you might not be happy with the way the holes look. They might look a little off. So just test it. But you can find fabrics out there of various scale to make it work. You know, like I said, the paper towel at the end of the day doesn't have the same fabric kind of weave to it that this does. You know, the kind of burlap look that we're getting out of this. Because this is that 100% cotton sheeting that I'm using. 
So all of that weave is part of the, the cloth itself, right? It also has a natural fraying to it, so the edges will fray. So I just like the 100% cotton, and with it being $2 for a big, huge piece, it's just so easy that that's what I would tend to use all the time. I like the frayed edges. You can trim them if you don't want them to be frayed. You know, I trimmed this piece for our tank. I just went along and cut off all the extra hairs, but you can see it still gives me a nice rough kind of tarp edge, a used worn tarp, right, all the way around. But you could also uh, fold that edge over and glue it, or you can come back now and sand that flat because this with the Mod Podge on it is basically going to make it turn into basically like plastic as far as working with it, right? So, I mean, like I said, this is, I did this earlier this afternoon and it took me, I don't know, 15 minutes like you saw me do the other one and then about an hour to get to this point where I could uh, airbrush it and then just airbrush primer on it, treat it just like a model. There's nothing special you have to do with regards to painting it at all. That's one coat of primer like I would normally do for anything. That's what's so great about this is that once you've got the knack, it, the biggest thing is the cellophane, you know, so that you can do it on any tank at any time. Did you see, um, so warm my name's question, what do you do for modeling how the tarp rolls are attached to the vehicle, tie down points and rope, et cetera? Yeah, uh, you can do that. Like after, at the end, I would look like, say on this guy, if we decide to on the uh, intake, this, let me get all this white out of the picture here because it's blowing the camera balance off to have all that cellophane and white paper towel, right? So if we look at the back end of our dust uh, walker here and we were gonna put the tarp roll on the diesel intake. This is an amphibious tank, so it has this diesel intake. And this one's kind of cool, right? Because it has these two toe spots or hook spots for the intake that are those loops right there. So that's almost perfect, right? Had I been actually making this for this, I would have modeled this to where my, my rope ties were spread perfectly to that. But as it is, I can come back now after the fact with my rope again keep calling my rope but this stuff right and you can imagine running a piece through the detail on the tank right like so if you have a detail like this like a hook or a loop then obviously right I can just run this through tie it off mod podge the uh, the rope after I've tied it off right and then paint that as part of the model now that might take a little bit more planning. Um, maybe not. I would probably, at this point, I could take just a little bitty piece of cling wrap and we can maybe make this work. Let's try it. Only thing is I can't hide the loop through portion, right? but you get my drift. We would be able to, let's just do it without that on there. Shove it through the hole. Now, if you didn't have a tie point already modeled on it, like our Land Raider doesn't have, uh, obviously you would you could convert something. You could get another piece from another model that would work. Um, you could take plastic sprue and create little tie spots, or there's nothing that says you have to have them. You can just glue it right onto the model. You know, in 35th scale military modeling, everybody was looking for what's realistic. So, you know, it makes it a little harder, um, but there's no reason why you have to uh, do anything. You know, you can literally just glue it onto like our Land Raider fender and be all right with it. It's magic. It's the 41st millennium. Stuff just happens, you know, who cares? Right. But right, and then I would just tie that to where my knot is on the bottom and then repeat on the other side. I'm not ready to do that because I want to do some painting on this thing as it sits here and not when it's on the tank, right? So that's what I'll do at the end. Done deal. Um, but like I was saying, you could take sprue, plastic sprue. Uh, you can melt it and make your own hooks. Uh, if you take just any piece, do I have any plastic sprue sitting here? I know I don't have the heat gun, so I can't show you. But if you take plastic, oh, I have the stuff that we made the antenna out of though. Right. So this is those pink. Uh, this is what we made the antenna for the 
the walker out of because it doesn't come with an antenna. Um, but I wanted to make them. And so I just took the little swabs. You guys have seen me use these for glue applicators and whatever else. These are called, what are these called? Micro applicators. Yeah, disposable micro applicators. I get them on Amazon for, there's like 200 or something in this thing. And I use the, what's called purple, but they're really the pink. It even says, oh no, I thought it said pink. It says pack. They're just the, the pink ones. And they've got a little cotton swab at the end of them for applying glue is what I, I principally use them for. But they're they're good for all sorts of stuff. And one of the things you can do is you can melt them. <laughs> you can uh, set it in front of your heat gun nozzle. And as it warms up, rotate it around like this, spin it. And as it warms up, you'll see it change its sheen. And then you can pull it apart. And as you pull it apart, you can bend it into whatever you want. So you can imagine pulling it apart and bending it. This is probably going to break if I bend it really tight. But you can imagine bending it into a loop, a very tight loop, to make your own hook spots right? like that. So if you wanted to make quote unquote metal loops on your tank, just take some sprue, heat it enough with a heat gun that it stretches. You can see it thinning out as you stretch it. So if you pull it real far, it just thins out and breaks. But if you just give it a slight pull, it'll get to whatever thickness you want and then fold it over into a U shape and then blow on it and it cools and then clip it off and you make U's that way. You can make tow hooks, uh, hook spots. You can make all sorts of neat little bits and bobs for your tank. You can make rivets that way, pull it really thin and then chop it up into slices for rivets. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff that you can make out of it. So that would be my first, you know, kind of go to if I didn't have the spot, like, you know, if I wanted to do that on the, the Land Raider, then I would just make a bunch of those heated U's or maybe two or three and then link the rope across to them to tie it down. Would be kind of neat. Lazy Dargan, old man, and walked uphill both ways in snow when I went to school. No. You're talking about how rough the Kleenex was. Yeah. Yeah, the Kleenex was rough, but I didn't have to walk uphill both ways in the snow. I live in Texas. They closed school for ice when I was a kid. <laughs> we always hoped it would ice over because they closed the school because they were afraid the pipes would burst. <laughs> Border Jumper, what's going on? Armin's Wrath, what is happening, man? Good to see you. Still one more name. Yeah, exactly. I, I make all my antennas out of sprue. So. It's just easy to do it. All right. Let's see what we got. How are we doing on these? No, these are too damp. What about this guy? Have we yapped long enough for our other bedroll to kind of start? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this guy's just about done. All right, so this now. Just peel the... Still a little damp, but not bad. I don't think I'd prime it yet, but I can trim it. Because you notice when we're using the 100% the cotton, we get all these frayed edges, which in some cases you want, right? But generally, I just cut them off. I'll just come in here and cut them off. All right. Now, there's that tarp or big ass space marine bedroll to go right around the couple of the tank All right and we've still maintained that shape we've got the the fold in it that nice crease and wrinkle through the fabric the rolls on the end All right and it's stiffening up nice and neat so it's not gonna not gonna straighten out anymore we don't have to worry about keeping it wrapped up now and for this one, I don't think I would worry about anything. I would, a lot of times the illusion is that because you have this rope here, that something underneath it, that it's tied down. So on something like this, I wouldn't go through the pain of making any tie-off spots. I would just glue this to the tank. 
you know, literally to the back of that cupola like that and just be done with it. Obviously paint it, right? <laughs> we do like to paint things here. Lies. Lies. Speaking of which, let's do some paint on this. I wanted to take this up to skeleton bone and just show you for our little cat turd thing here. <laughs> Make it look less cat turdy. Make it look less less cat turdy. <laughs> Somebody, I think somebody asked, what the F is that? I was thinking it's probably they're looking at the cat the turd. turd. <laughs> the cat, what the, what are you guys doing on this channel? We paint cat turds. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah, so when whoever was asking, what else could you use for this? Cat turd. No, no, don't use no. poop. No poop? Don't use poop. Okay. Please stop telling people to use poop. <laughs> <laughs> Not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> I'm going to grab my Bombwick angled dry brush and my glasses that are on my head here. We're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. So far, I've just used cam black brown, chocolate brown. Um, what was the next color that I used after that? Desert yellow from Army Painter. And now skeleton bone, also from Army Painter. Here I want to start using, I airbrushed all the rest on, but now I want to start using a dry brush at my highlight color to start picking out some of that fabric detail. Right. Ah, I never dry brush, and so it, it, I always, you guys know, I always <laughs> try to clean my brush. I always try to put my brush in water. Don't do that. I'm just going to go through this spine here again when you dry brush always make sure you're only hitting the model in one direction so i'm pulling paint from our top towards that center ridge right now and i'm gonna have to turn the model and be smart enough to reverse it and do it this way i'm not a smart man yes you are Notice how when I dry brush, I literally don't have very much pigment on the brush at all. It allows me to pick up those edges down below. Using actual cat turd would be a cat turd strippy. A cat turd strippy. I like it. Not, not cat poop. Not cat poop tarp would be perfect inclusion for the hobby hangout scat show. <laughs> I don't know what those words mean. That's the Liz, the Liz and uh, the Liz Hunt show where there's a lot of poop talk that oh. happens in the hobby hangout. Um, her and her boyfriend talk about poop. seem to. Drag it to Poopsville all the time. <laughs> all the way to Poopsville. Right, so see, now we get that cotton texture and it's perfect. I mean, it looks like heavy burlap or something, you know, heavy canvas tarp. This is one of those situations where dry brushing really makes all the difference. And I haven't gone back to the color in a while. I'm just using whatever little bit of paint is left on the brush right now Taz drag out. out. Taz out said you put Citadel paints in eyedropper bottles. Do I? Is that a question? That is a question. I don't use Citadel paints, Taz, but yes, uh, I recommend putting them in dropper bottles. Um, it's a great way to do it. I, uh, I don't use Citadel paints because, uh, I mean, literally, because I don't want to go through the hassle of having to buy paints that are <laughs> more expensive than bottles. other paints and then buy bottles and put them in bottles. There's better paints out there or equally as good paints out there that you don't have to do that with. But I get it. Some people don't have access to other paint brands. And so Citadel is very good. But I would always recommend 
trying to put them into droppers if you can. It's just a, it's an unnecessary expense. I hate that people have to do that. And I'm going to take just on these ends, just a light dry brush so I can pick up the rolled portion of that a little bit. The edge there. There. And that's pretty good. We got that edge that comes across. I don't want to interrupt my shadow too much, but I like having that edge be bright as it would be. Right. And that looks pretty darn good. Yeah, it does. Like that. And you can decide how bright you want to go. I think on our on our dust tank that that's. Good. I might go a little bit brighter. I want it to be a little bit more bleached out than the paint on the tank. I don't want it to be the exact same color, which is why I'm going to skeleton bone. So yeah, I think we will go up one more layer of dry brush. What can I go from skeleton bone without having to just mix white? What's easy? What can I do that's easy? How about brain matter beige? That's really, really bright. How about buff? <laughs> I feel like buff is probably the right color. <laughs> Still one more name says, everyone has access to better paint brands through slowfeesgaming.com. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. And then he said, you owe me five bucks for the plug, by the way. Wait a minute. <laughs> How is that? Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> we didn't plan for that in our marketing budget. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, what? We have a marketing budget? <laughs> How come I didn't know this? Because we spent it already. He's a model color buff. I don't know if it's going to get bright enough or not here. I really need to be right handed for a minute. <laughs> uh oh. So I can do this edge in the same direction. Dry brushing is all about direction of the, the stroke. And, uh, Careful. What? It's not that kind of show. <laughs> I swear. Right. Got a little bit brighter. <laughs> That's a little bit brighter. Not bad. It ain't bright enough though, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna add brain. I'm gonna add ivory to it. Screw it. Why am I? Why am I messing around? Let's just go for the gusto. Let's do it. Model color ivory is the highlight color that I like to add to pretty much everything. So I'm going to add that to my skeleton bone. I'm just mix it. I'm not going to mix it with my dry brush. I'm smarter than that. So says I. What? Huh? What? Slow Fuse Gaming Special White is made in-house from a secret recipe of hobo squeezins and unicorn tears. <laughs> there are no unicorn tears. We don't we don't make our unicorns cry. I disagree. Honey, with it's this. urban legend. Just let them go with it. No, I don't like it. Urban legend. All right. So just a little bit of ivory mixed in with the uh, skeleton bone that we used the first time around. Should be the right amount of brightness for us. Got to be very, very careful. You don't want, notice how I'll go onto my thumb and much like, you know, with my normal painting, I'll make sure I don't have any big glommed on chunks of no, paint. No, they don't. They love it. They sing along with it. And I'm just going to get the highest spots, like on this part of the fold where I'm nabbing it, this part of the fold, but not in the middle dip. I'm just going to catch it right here. Here, here, and then back here, but I have to change the stroke direction again. On that edge. No, that's, we don't work them that hard. They don't cry. Don't that's like the kind it. of brightness I was looking to get out of it. Again, I'll catch this edge and as you can see right the mod podge has made this like plastic i'm knocking the crap out of it with a dry brush but the fabric's not moving so that's why i love this process you can get away with 
paint however you want. Any word on the bomb bags? Uh, no, not yet. I'm hoping to hear from her beginning of the week. Is that what they're called? Uh, no, they're the hobby go bag. Bomb bags. No, we don't want to put that on there because yeah. if you ever travel TSA. with it. <laughs> TSA yeah, might frown on bomb bag. Like that. See it coming a mile away. <laughs> Probably not a good thing. So uh, can I check my bomb bag? <laughs> uh, what? What? Uh, sir, we're gonna have to have you come over here for a full cavity search. <laughs> You want to check your cavities? I don't have any cavities. I just went to the dentist. <laughs> bump bump. <laughs> All right. So I feel like that's good. Um, I like it. Now any we'll news on the racks? Uh, what news are we looking for? Yeah, this is Kev Rob. Kev Rob. Um. I went and spoke with him face to face yesterday. There was a big problem with regards to what racks they had cut. So I did not get the racks in stock that I was hoping to, meaning 64 dropper bottle racks. But I'm hoping that in the next day or so uh, that I will get word back um, over the weekend. And again, by Monday, be able to help you out. That set us back a few weeks. Well, maybe not a few weeks. They could get them cut pretty quick. But that's what we're waiting on right now is 64 dropper bottle racks to get back in. The recut of the GW bottle rack. Um, I had to make a minor adjustment to the GW dropper rack. Or not dropper rack, but the GW pot rack. Um, and I think that is solved so that we can cut those. So uh, the Vallejo dropper rack, the or just your dropper bottle rack because it will hold all sorts of paints. The GW rack, the corner rack is good to go. The flex rack, the rack that allows you to set the shelves up however you would like. Uh, that one needs a little bit of minor adjusting. It's going to take me doing the engineering on it here. I hope to do some of that this weekend. So the long and short of it is that I'll have a lot more information coming up this next week. For all of this stuff, understand all the new product, all the new brushes. we got two new brush sets coming out for May. or um, Yeah, for May, but end of April, technically, and May. Um, the bags for May the new racks and all that for May. So May is a huge target month for us because that's our one year anniversary. So we plan to have a lot of really new product going on. Um, and that's all along been kind of our date. If we could get April out of some of them, we're trying. But if it doesn't, it's, you know, it's kind of like in the back of my head, I've always been like, well, they just need to be here for May anyway. So. Crack the whip. People are chomping at the bit. I know. I know they are, Armin's. Bomb bag sounds like a double entendre. Does it? Not to me, but I don't know. <laughs> Does it? Woo, pot rack. What? Pot rack? <laughs> Can't call it a pot rack. The paint pot rack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, back to on this guy... I think we can just go in with chocolate brown for the ropes. Zoom out a bit. <clears throat> Model color chocolate brown is what I'm going to use. And then we'll go to something a little more yellow for our leather, I think. Or the rope. The problem when doing desert camo like what we're doing is that all the colors kind of go together. <laughs> As you start looking at it, it's like, well, it's all been in the desert, and all the sand's the same color, and so I feel like everything would be the same color. It's not me. I have no control over what people do in China. What's that? KTP said, you heard them start cracking the whip. <laughs> I can't I can't fix that. Oh, the bag? Yeah. Oh. No, she's a... It, it's a very small outfit. It's not a major factory. So, and I like her a lot. And, uh, but it takes time, right? The amount of time that she takes to make a bag because she's doing it by hand is a lot different than if we went to a big place that made it all with monster machines and such. Like our soap. Yep, just like our soap. Jen makes all our soap by hand. 
and it makes all the difference in the world. Quality control is a lot better that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that the bags are like that. It's costing us more to make them that way, but that's all right. It's the right way to do it, but it takes time. And as much as I'd like to be able to crack the whip, you know, it's as much a relationship as anything. Because of the way that I design stuff, I don't just buy people's off-the-shelf stuff. Which makes it, number one, hard to find anybody that wants to work with you because obviously we don't make a million pieces of anything. So we have to be very selective. Or I, I, I guess we have to be selective because we want the quality, but we don't have a lot to select from because not many people want to build, you know, 500 or 1,000 pieces don't of anything. Don't eat the anymore. soap. Huh? Melty Mortal said, will the bag taste as good as the soap? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, don't eat the soap. No, the bag will taste better than the soap. <laughs> we made it. It comes in flavors. Don't we didn't say bag. that to you? The foam comes in flavors. Don't the little the foam inserts. Don't eat the foam. The foam inserts no, come in Tide Pod foam. flavor. Magnum condom flavor. <laughs> You're snorting those and not eating those. Oh, well, you still get a flavor out of it, don't you? Maybe. Because they pull it out their mouth. That was the old thing when we had, like in high school, we had a kid that, Brandon Haygood. Why do I remember his name? That's awesome. <laughs> Brandon, ha Brandon Haygood was the first kid I ever saw eat a cockroach. Ew. And he would snort. Have you seen more, any since? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, my God. I ate one. Oh. And, uh, and, and then, uh, hey, when you're a kid, the things you do for a rouse out of your friends is amazing. Um, but Brandon Haygood ate, the uh, first kid I saw eat a cockroach, and then after that was the first kid I saw snort a piece of spaghetti up his nose and pull it out his Mouth. His mouth, yeah. and do the and do the this thing with a big long well, piece of spaghetti. It, uh, at least it was food and not a piece of latex, you know, or whatever. <laughs> because that's just ridiculous. I think back when we were kids, if you'd have gone in and tried to buy condoms at the drugstore, they probably called your parents. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that was a thing. <sighs> we got a report. From the store, somebody mentioned about our glass balls. We got a report from the store the other day that the glass, the amount of glass balls that we've sold is somewhere in the neighborhood of like, I, don't, I figure it's like 50,000 glass balls or some stupid number like that. A lot of our balls in the world, friends. <laughs> Marto, what's going on? We are painting a cat turd. You're late to the party, friend. <laughs> <laughs> it is cat turd night. Oh, should I turn my hat backwards? Is it getting in front of the camera? I saw it peek in there just a little bit, but I must have not been watching when it was. Yeah, with the new camera set up, I've been asking everybody to let me know because I didn't, you know, as I have to, the, the new uh, studio setup has got the camera directly above, which I think is better for painting. You guys are going to be able to see every brush stroke a lot better because you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing now. Um, but uh, yeah, if I'm wearing a hat, I turned it around the other day. I should have remembered. I remember. I'm going to do Beastie Brown. Game color Beastie Brown. My ancient Beastie Brown that really needs to be thrown away <laughs> and start a new bottle, I think. This is the one that I gave Jen, and the top is cracked when you're painting like oh, your yeah. little elf girl, and it just goes, yeah. like it just floods out all over the place. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's not good. How was Adepticon? Adepticon was really fun. It was awesome. We had a great time. It's a very successful event. It's great to meet everybody. Yeah. Tons of new faces to put names to from the stream. Lots of fun had. Neat stuff, although I didn't get to walk the show very much. And Jen didn't at all. Just when I would go to get coffee. Yeah, when we'd <laughs> enter and leave kind of thing. 
Uh, where would you like me to put these? Back in there? Yeah. I don't see why not. Makes it easy. We just go to that box for them and pick out the ones that don't have the covers on them. And here, of course, I'm just finding the string pattern and painting that. This, uh, it's not actually embroidery stuff. The embroidery stuff was not what I wanted. So I don't know what they call this, but there's just cotton. Thick thread for something or other. Some sort of hobby knitting thing. But it's got a good pattern. Even after knock, knocking the Mod Podge onto it, you can still find all of the spots to get it to remain looking like rope. Like a sculpt would. It's not as pronounced as like a GW model, but it's damn close. And it's cheap. Uh, leather brown, I think we'll use next. Actually, no, you know what? I'm just going to jump up to middle stone. It's tiny. I don't need to worry about it. Or khaki. We can uh, take middle stone. Yep. I'm going to go to middle stone. Middle stone is the, uh, the top color, the desert tan color that I've used on uh, the tank itself. So I'm just going to use that for the rope as well. myself and make sure I'm paying attention to what's the actual top of the rope. <laughs> it does look like a thing a mouse would take camping, like uh, um, the mouse on the motorcycle. That's his little blanket. Can you move up? Yes. Yeah, now the nice thing is that the directions are real. Left is my left, right is my oh. right, up is my up. Yeah, it does seem like miniature camping gear. Yeah. Well, that's what it is, right? It's so cool. Again, always just staying away from those dark crevices so that I can maintain my shadow. I panel sprayed this one just like I did the tank, like I've been showing you guys with the airbrush lately, making sure that I don't uh, leave any of my, or don't over brighten any of these shadow areas in between like the, the rope pinching against the tarp, places like that. There you got it. Very easy. I don't want to go too much brighter because that'll make it look shiny in such a small area. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. Looks pretty good. Yeah, looks really good. Right. And then technically, if we wanted to, we could just glue it on there. Too zoomed. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan for it to really, I mean, I, I planned to paint it like it was going to go on this tank, but I didn't know if I'd find a spot for it or not. But I kind of like it right there on the, uh, the intake scoop. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm a fan. So that's one down with literally 20 cents worth of material to make something really cool. Bingo.
makes my tank not like everybody else's tank. Uh, and now we can check this guy out. Remember we did the uh, the camo net out of Is that hard enough. I feel like eh, it feels like it. Out of gauze. So this is just injury gauze. Go to the drugstore. Did I, th I think I threw the pack away. Right? Mm -hmm. Just sterile gauze. Right? So we'll take this. Make sure all of our saran wrap doesn't stick to itself. And the nice thing about the saran wrap and why I started using it all those years ago is because it just peels right off of this stuff. Right, the Mod Podge doesn't really affect it at all. Well, it's a little damp right there. Let me lay that back on there for a second. It's not really going to matter if I lay it on this model, but that, the inside area right in there is still a little bit damp. But everything else is drying up nice. So I'm going to leave it for just a little bit more. On that one. And actually, because what is this? That one's still, well, that one's actually, our paper towel is doing a better job of drying quick than the others. But we could paint that guy up real quick. Set this aside. I want to show you, I really want to, I want to work on this guy. Um, I have another one of these bodies. I wonder if this one with a different turret would probably work okay. I've got another one of these tank bodies, so I'm going to see if I can't supplant. It's the same model, just has a different turret set up. Ah, that's perfect. That'll dry. So I can set that aside as a drying rack. And we can paint this one. Why don't you donate five dollars to the cause and maybe it'll thank make you it big red back. alpha big red alpha thank you so much man how are you big zach what is happening all right more cellophane in this case the cellophane is only because i'm going to airbrush on this and i don't really want to get a bunch of paint on the tank itself the tank hasn't been painted at all yet, but right. But remember, this is a section that we've already done. Ten dollar donation received from Big Red Alpha. Big Thanks Red Alpha. for helping me with Magnus on the Wednesday WIP. Definitely, man. Always <laughs> appreciate the time, my friend. Definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> How does she not get Big Red Alpha? Big Red Alpha. Big Red Alpha. It's. I think when you put it all as one name, like the internet makes you do, it throws her off. Yeah. She says, Big Red Alpha. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Oh, that's what we were going to do. I'm sitting here thinking about what else we were going to do. We were going to do the uh, the barrel wrap for that. Let's do that. Aha. KTP reminding me. I knew. I'm sitting here in the back of my head. I'm like, there's something else that I was supposed to do. I wanted to show you, like, all of these we've done as separate deals. Um, and so what we want to do here is do the barrel wrap, right? So awesome, KTP. Thank you so much for that. Because yes, the barrel of our tank looks too much like a uh, freaking marker cap, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know the difference of the guns. I don't play these games. But, <laughs> but the, uh, the gun barrel itself, I'm gonna take the machine gun the pencil mount gun off of there too. And here, what we're gonna wind up doing is masking off basically the rest of the tank because we're gonna be mod podging around, but what we're gonna do on this is going to stay on the tank. We're not gonna be able to take it off. So we don't want to um, put the cellophane under where we're gonna do the fabric. We want it everywhere else so that we still can, you know, do this on the tank, not affect the paint, because obviously our paint is pretty far along. But we want to be able to do a wrap. I just want to be able to do a fabric wrap on this barrel. So I'm going to go back to the cotton 
for this guy. Why are and you wrapping it in fabric? What's that? You're wrapping it in fabric? Yeah, um, you, you could use it as they made camo, or they make modern camo for tank barrels. So that the barrel sticking out of a tree line or something still looks like a tree branch or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're just going to wrap it to give it some texture on there so it doesn't look like a pin cap. Mm -hmm. We talked about that the other day on stream, which kind of, that's what started this whole thing of, hey, you know what I want to do? i show you guys how to do this stuff. And I completely spaced. Like the whole thing that started us down this path was the pin cap barrel of the gun. And now I've made a bunch of bed rolls and tarps and the barrel still looks like a pin cap. <laughs> so once again, again, you know, cheapo, cotton, freaking, uh, does it even have a tag? 100% cotton, hand washed cold, made in India. I don't know. Echo in India. Doesn't say. It's just a, it's just a bandana, right? It's a 18 inch by 18 inch square bandana, and you can see how much we've used, right? <laughs> that one we still have about a million years worth of 100% cotton from one two dollar bandana. So I wasn't lying when I said that everything we're doing tonight probably costs about 50 cents. Okay. Now I'm going to get the thickness of this right. I don't want to cover the whole barrel. That's too thick or too wide. That's probably good. All right. So again, I'm going to wet it. I'm assuming this stuff has like sizing in it. I'm not sure what sizing is. What is sizing? Uh, like starch. Starch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it has starch in it because it is stiff when it starts, but it breaks up pretty quick. You just want to make sure you get it wet enough that you can manhandle it around on the model. And I'm not real concerned about the frayed edges at the beginning of this. And then I'm just going to. Wrap it pretty tight. Get any of those loose ends off of there. And I am just going to use the same rope. Now you could do this, you know, obviously this is dust tactics. I don't know what the hell this. barrel end would actually be in real life as far as what would attach it there probably could use like straps of leather or something so I could make uh, plastic straps out of uh, sheet styrene if I wanted to but for efficiency of time we're just going to go through and tie this with the same rope that we did our tarp I think I'm going to wrap it more if I can, if I can. I believe, uh oh, now you get to see me fight my big <laughs> fudgy fingers trying to thread this little bitty area here. This is what I suck at. This is the part where I literally go berserk all the time when I cut it to just the right length <laughs> and have to do this. I gotta hope that it kicks up through the hole just right. Pull that pretty tight. to um, what I got what I got I got El Pinto Brusho you 
use the tools you have, man. You can do it. This is the best use in the world for a Kalinsky Sable brush. <laughs> by the way, you know, when you're not painting with them, just ruin the tip by tying knots with it. How about that? after the Mod Podge hardens it up. In a perfect world, I will be able to kind of scrunch this up a bit without busting my turret, please. <laughs> I want to take the fact that I've got this rope as a sort of a leverage point and push the fabric back down the barrel a little bit like so can you move it up just a little bit let me back out a little bit i think that's the thing i'm having to do this work close to my body here uh let's get some more string see now i've lost the end now as oh there i found it thanks I was like, it's always inevitable. <laughs> I will have to cut it right in the middle. I'll just grab it and like chop it in half so I have 18 <laughs> ends, you know? This one I'm going to cut like a foot of it so I don't have to worry about. Alright. What I want... If you've seen like the British tank barrels like on the Centurion and stuff like that, it has a little bit of scrunch to it. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Just create that scrunch on the barrel. Not too overly dramatic, but some. would never hire me as a sailor. <laughs> I don't drink enough, I don't cuss enough, and I sure as hell can't tie a knot. I could probably do the cuss part. I could be trained. Yeah. I could be trained. I've heard you. <laughs> hey. It's a lie. I'm not a, I don't have like a horrible sailor mouth, do I? Sometimes? Sometimes. Dang. The truth hurts. <laughs> she knows me too well. I still well, love you. But the truth hurts. <laughs> All right. Now, if we can, I may not get lucky enough to be able to turn it over because I tied it pretty tight. So I'm just going to leave those right on top where we can see them. I want to make sure I get, like I said, a little bit. Of that scrunched fabric feel. Bingo. All right. Hey, somebody likes us. Hey, thank you. Arnadon85. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are showing, if you're just joining us and you're wondering what the hell we're doing, <laughs> I'm showing people some unique ways to do some camo netting slash tarp bed rolls, all sorts of really cool stuff in the world of like fabric add-ons for vehicles and diorama use especially. 
Uh, but you could imagine doing these as bed rolls on the back of, you know, Imperial Guard or anything like that instead of buying resin bits. You know, all you would have to do is scale this stuff down even more. You know, we created this guy to sit on the back of the cupola of our Rhino. Right? So it is now molded on there because of the way we press fit. It even has the indention for that little square thing on the back there. Right? And that'll sit there perfectly. And we paint it up and give you a detail that you're not going to see on other tanks. And because it's so simple, quick, and cheap to do, you can do it on all of your vehicles, all of your troops, fast and easy, and give a lot of life to your army without a lot of effort. All right. So again, break out our Mod Podge. Or you can use white glue, school glue. Uh, the school glue, you're probably going to have to water down a little bit more and do a couple extra layers. Mod Podge seems to do it all in one. All right. We don't see the... Oh. Or if I, I did here, I don't think I moved anything. I think I have to call it a night. Back hurting? Yeah. Not feeling good? Not feeling good. All right, baby. Bye, everyone. Tell Jen bye, guys. She's leaving us. I'm she doesn't like us anymore. She's done with it's us. Hard. Had a long week. You're not feeling sick still, are you? Uh, I feel like stuffy, like my, there's that pressure. Here. Your throat's not bothering you though, is it? Not as much as it was yesterday. Still a little bit. Just Take some more of that silver. Yeah. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Now this we already painted the barrel, but I'm not Let's super concerned with off. it. What's that? Are you gonna turn my camera off? Oh yeah, yeah, Just I can. So I don't see, you see your butt as you're walking off? She's not wearing pants, so if she oh, gets yeah, up and leaves the room. I can't leave right now until <laughs> You're wearing pants. Yes, I'm wearing pants. All right, who, who wants me to leave the camera on so you can watch her walk out of the room? I'm taking votes. Go over here. I love you, baby. Hope you feel better. Oh, rip. That's not what I meant to do. No, that's not what I meant to do. God dang it, woman. I should have just let him watch you walk out of the room. All right. Well, that was professional. Threw me for a loop. She's leaving early. I'm like, wait, what? Too many buttons. Now you guys get the the long walk, right? You get to view her walking like all the way down the hallway. I want to make sure I don't build up a lot of Mod Podge on the silver barrel if I can avoid it. But there's not really a way for me to mask it since I've already painted it. So we'll just have to deal with it. Again, not much water on the brush is needed, but you want it a little bit damp. The Mod Podge by itself is so thick that you run the risk of it uh, kind of clogging up the fabric texture. So Try to be at least a little bit careful with that. And don't use your same paint pot or cleaning jar for doing this, please. <laughs> You'll hate yourself. If you then turn around and try to clean brushes in Mod Podge water. I'm not saying it's bad for your brushes, but I'm pretty sure it's not good for your brushes. I'm gonna take that off. Now that I got the bulk of it done, make sure it looks like I got Notice how it's already starting to form that wrinkle in the fabric that I wanted on the barrel there. I just didn't want it to be pulled tight. If you, if to me in my brain that just doesn't make sense. It would look kind of funky. 
every time I've seen one of these, like on German leopards and modern tanks and stuff, it feels like it's mostly got a loose, not ultra baggy feel to it, but somewhat. That's what we're going for. Of course, this is a plasma cannon, so I'm assuming that our fabric is some really heavy-duty fabric to not just completely burn off every time the plasma gun fires. Uh, yeah, we won't talk about that. We won't talk about the reality of what would happen if we wrapped a plasma gun with fabric. We're just going for cool factor. It's difficult. Being so old is if difficult. Is it difficult to bend over and tie my shoes these days? No. I just don't tie my shoes, man. You just leave them laced to that, that like almost loose point where you can just always pull your shoes on like slippers. What do you take me for, man? I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> KTP, you're a helpful troll. You are. You reminded me of something. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'm okay with that. Just throw back my legs and pollute my britches with delight. Bill Neary with the two months. Thank you, my friend. What is going on? You've been here the whole time. My gift wrapping needs some work. Uh, don't ever ask me to wrap gifts for you. That's a bad thing to do. <laughs> Black Wolf. Hi, Jen. Bye, Jen. Asbestos. There you go. Melty, Melty coming in with the answers. Pure asbestos. Crew gets lung cancer, but tank is safe. Right? My eye just started burning. Ah, got all the fans on. It's really dry. It's starting to get hot. It's that time of year. Keep your reality out of my fantasy. But Myrtle, where are the tag pilot's legs? <laughs> I love your stupid face, Bill Neary. Thank you, my friend. The PC likes us more than the phone. I don't ever try to do Twitch on mobile devices. It's always a pain in the butt. Like, literally, I did. it always drives me bonkers. Oh, hang on, guys. Sorry. My eyes are doing the, the burn water thing. All right. So there you go. Now we have a barrel sleeve of some sort. And, of course, we'll have our uh, tarp that we painted on the back. And that's all we'll do. This started off not with the tarp being part of the tank, but I think it's going to work pretty well if we paint them up the same. Right. And it definitely gives us something on the barrel that makes it not so bland because that big flat spot was a pain in the butt. I agree. When uh, when whoever it was on uh, stream, or it might have been somebody at Adepticon, took a letter and goes, hey, that reminds me of those old markers we used to use in school. And I looked at it and I go, oh, you've ruined it for me. You've literally ruined the tank for me. <laughs> so there you go barrel wrapping now take that off right barrel warmer that's just a good way to break up and put some more texture on it might not make a lot of sense might piss off a tank enthusiast for like oh my god that's not what that would be but i don't care like someone said keep your reality out of my fantasy i do what i want i like it that's gonna work well Right, so now we have a personalized, uh, El Cheapo personalized tank. Works like a champ. Let's check our uh, Land Raider tarp. We did the folded tarp on the top of the Land Raider, remember? And again, being able to do it and go back onto your army and, and do it as you want. Now, this one's made out of paper towel, remember? We didn't use the cotton on this. Bang. And this may still be a little damp. The paper towel... <laughs> Holds its dampness for a bit, so I probably don't want to put that right on the paint job. It's dry on the outside, but on the part down here, I'm going to turn it over as a matter of fact, because it's a, it's dry enough on the top that it's not going to cause us a problem. But same exact thing. We just use paper towel here. Somebody had asked, can you use other materials other than the cotton? Sure can. You know, this is just a household paper towel, the same paper towels that I'm using to clean my brushes off on that have... You just want to make sure it doesn't have much of a pattern. These have these dots in it that are like absorbency dots. And the, as soon as you get it wet, those go away. Right? So you don't have any of that texture on here. Hard to see with it being white. 
but there's none of those dots anymore. Once you've got the paper towel wet, all that disappears. But we've been able to bend it. Now it, I mean, I could, uh, I'm not gonna do that. This is paper towel. If I stretch it open, it will break. So probably not a good thing to do. Go ahead and let it dry some more. Bingo. And let's check our camo net. And we've actually made a lot of these, haven't we? I didn't think we'd make this much. Oh yeah, now we're good, all right. So as you can see, you get the form, the mold basically, made out of the cling wrap. And this was just our um, uh, sterile gauze pad, right? Is all this was for making netting where you wanna have a larger opening in the fabric, looser weave, however you wanna say that. So it just peels off, right? It doesn't tear. The Mod Podge doesn't stick to the uh, cling wrap. So it's a great thing to use. Now, I, I, I throw it away. I don't reuse it because it's got Mod Podge all over it. Right. There you go. And now, same way we did for the other one. This is basically like a part of the model now. I can just snap fit it on there. Right. That works. Take that off, we don't need that right now. Bam, it sits right on it. And it has all of the folds and the weight still that we gave it, right? Sides flared out a little bit when I took the uh, cellophane off. But when we glue it on, we can fix that. Right? Oh my God, I just knocked the antenna off of the other tank with these abusively long guns. I need to just take these off of there. Like I literally just broke the antenna off the other tank, smacking it with these guns. Freaking guns. This tank's a mile long. All right. Bingo. But we've created camo net and now we can paint this up just like we would anything. Let's prime it. Got the airbrush ready over here. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just treat it like a model once the Mod Podge is dried. I mean, it stands up on its own. It's just a solid piece now. This stuff is fairly brittle too. So kind of like the paper towel, I wouldn't try to, uh, you know, bend it or uh, reshape it or anything like that once it's dried like it is. Now the biggest hassle is airbrushing and priming. Because it's so lightweight, this thing is going to want to blow away from you. Like, I'll be surprised if it doesn't blow out of my hand and all over my studio here in a second. And I didn't talk about it, but you could cut this to shape now. Like if you just wanted to make a big piece and fold it and mold it to the model, and then when it was dry like this, then go back and cut it into whatever shape you wanted. Definitely a doable thing. Uh, make sure you paint the bottoms as well. Bill Neary, he went down to, to full-on anti-social mode. Like, to heck with you people. I'm out. Put some more primer in there. It will eat a lot of primer, much like painting wood or something, because the fabric is going to need quite a bit more than just a, a hard plastic surface. It's still a little bit porous. Especially stuff like this. Oh, look. Check it out. It acts as a, uh, what is this, a, uh, not a template, a, uh, it's 
a great way to paint fishnet. I said it's eaten through freaking primer. Type exclamation point whip in chat, guys. Uh, after this, we will probably take a look at what you guys have got cooking. So you can go over into the whip gallery, post your picks up, log in, register, get all that stuff done over at slowfusegaming.com. Again, exclamation point WIP in chat will get you there, get you the link at least. And go show us what you guys have got cooking. Has anybody taken the dive and made any uh, tarps or camo netting while the stream has been going on? Show us that. If not, just show us what else you've been painting and working on. We will do a quick end of stream whip session here. What time is it anyway? It's about 7.13. Yeah, we got a time. I was, that's about right. I said about 7.15, 7.30, we'd stop and do whip. We're right on time. Good enough for government work. Good enough to get us to where we can then start putting whatever color paint on it that we want. Throw our tank out. Throw it back on. Boom. And we've got draped camo net. Once I get it set in there right. Oh, we could probably spray that backside a little bit better. A little white on there still. Bingo. And now I got camo net. Stick the guns back on since we've already done all the damage we can do to the other tank on the table. Well, that, don't say that. Never say that. We could knock it off the table. Cause all sorts of hell. Now we have a really cool setup for a diorama or, I mean, hell, you can just do this on your army, right? This is a little overboard for just a tank that we're going to be you know, pushing around the table, why would it have a big camo net on it? But eh, no reason why not. Right. But it dries exactly the way we set it up. Looks like it was meant to be there. Maintains all of those folds and creases. Now this was on the gauze, we got the fold lines. Remember I told you uh, the only gauze I had around the house to show off was small two inch by two inch pads that I actually have in my field pack for medical purposes. I don't use those for modeling. I didn't have any of the large three or four by four, but you can get the four inch by four inch and three inch gauze pads. Those allow you enough space to cut inside of the fold lines. Uh, I found that I've never had a really good uh, way of taking the fold lines out. Now, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can imagine this camo net was folded up for them when they unfolded it and put it out on the tank. So still, you can get away with it. I don't like them. So I would not use this particular net on the tank, but I just wanted to show you how to make it because I'm going to use this one, the cotton one that I used, which is exactly the same, just made out of the cotton fabric instead of the gauze. And it was a little bit smaller, it looks like. But now I can paint this however I want. I can brush paint it, dry brush it, uh, airbrush it like I've, you know, like I did with the uh, primer. 
coat on there, camo pattern. Um, you know, you can uh, do all sorts of really cool stuff to it. You can set, you know, other pieces on it. If you were going to do like, uh, you know, like a fixed position, uh, any aircraft gun or battery or something like that for a diorama, you could set barrels and, and things on here so that it would look like it was meant to stay in place. You know, you can imagine, I don't know that I have any bits or bobs around here that would make sense to put on top of here, but you can imagine placing things on it, right? So maybe you've got a, a gun or a, something that, you know, one of the men is working on and you could have that. You can put that on there early when you're forming it so that it also doesn't just sit on top, that it would make an impression in the fabric from the top and be more realistic. If you're going to do those types of things, set barrels on it, sandbags on it, whatever, just take another piece of the cellophane after you've mod podged it and got it into the position, pushed it down the way that you want it, take a piece of cellophane, right? And you could even lay the cellophane over the entire top if you needed to, if you're putting a lot of details or had a dude standing on it or whatever, right? Take the cellophane and then press in the various details that you want and leave them sit while it dries. That way it'll form to everything, but you don't get, you know, pieces glued to it because you can still at the end of it when it's dried, just peel the cellophane right off and you're still left with the same hard piece of fabric. Right? Cool stuff. Think you'll use it? One of the funnest things to do, you know, just to be creative, create your own parts and pieces for models, whether it's like little tarp rolls, bed rolls for soldiers, you know, you name it, make all sorts of neat stuff that you want to do. Um, you can do awnings. Uh, you know, you can imagine this being something that you made like a, uh, a shade awning for a diorama or you know, anything. Let your brain go nuts with it. Why do I have a Blood Angels Land Raider? That's Uncle Touchy's Blood Angels vehicles that he gave to us. I don't remember why he gave them to us. Stencil, that's what I was looking for, Assassin Red. You got it. You knew what I was talking about. Drago, probably re-upload. Yeah, re-upload if you want to get my, my uh, points. I won't go back and dig through all the pictures generally, unless it's something that's easy to find. If you tell me it's easy to find, then I might, I might look. What I need to do is figure out where the hell that antenna busted off and went to. Did it break clean, please? Yes? Question mark? I feel like it broke off clean, so we're good. Yeah, it did. All right. I'm not as mad as I could have been. Yeah, it broke. It broke off clean, didn't smack my antenna. It broke off at the glue spot. So unfortunately I can't really pin that. I could if I had more patience, but I'm not gonna do that. So I gotta fix my antenna at some point. No biggie. So we've seen us take one from uh, wet fabric, Why Mod you? Podge, I'm letting it dry. JP Gray, thank well, you so much, my friend. How the hell are you? Right? Take it from Mod Podge to finished product pretty much. I mean, this is a, a tarp that now you can put on anything you want. You know, this would look as good on uh, our 40K stuff as it does on our World War II stuff. I used to, you know, when I was a kid making dioramas a lot, I would just make a bunch of bedrolls and things like this so that as I was making tanks, I could just reach over and grab one, you know, and set it up however I wanted to, you know, throw it around. I used to just glue them right on the hull. My, uh, my first Imperial Fist Army had these things like all over all the tanks. I think a few of them still do because there used to be some metal bits that you could get from GW uh, that were like this. And I think maybe even one or two of the tanks had plastic $3. bits on them for it too, like some of the guard tanks. received from Jape Gray 87. Live in La Vida Loca. Live in <laughs> La Vida Loca. Cool, Drago. Yeah, so you can imagine, I mean, it's not like this is just for World War II stuff. I use it uh, as much as in Grimdark as a way to personalize your tanks and vehicles. Um, you know, you can imagine using it on, uh, you know, a, like I said, for flyers, you're probably only going to use it when you have like a diorama of a, a flyer on the ground. But, you know, go crazy. Do whatever you want. Make it your thing. Right? Like we did with this one, just having it wrapped around the back of the couple of probably makes the most sense and paint it up however you want. Painted in Blood Angels Red. You do you. All right. And like
like I showed before, we showed off the Land Raider and doing it with paper towel instead of cotton. If you don't have a, a cotton shirt or something else that you want to cut up, you can use a paper towel. And it works just as well. It takes a little bit longer to dry, I'm finding. The wet paper towel is still wet on the underneath, so I don't want to take the cellophane off yet. But the shape is there. It's all on top. All the folds hey, are hard. Somebody likes us. If the bottom wasn't still wet, I could prime this as it is. And the only thing... Bam, Curdy, thank you so much. Welcome. The only problem with the, the paper towel is the brittleness. Like I said, you can tear it, crack it, break it, whereas the fabric isn't going to break. Like our, our roll here is never going to have a problem. It won't snap in half because it's cotton fabric that's all woven together. Um, some of these other things, the gauze is probably a little bit more brittle. Uh, I feel like it would probably tear a little bit easier if we were to give it a pull. Eh, maybe not. It deforms, but it didn't seem like it wanted to tear. Eh, so maybe the gauze is good. I'm never hard on this stuff, so I don't know that I push it very far. The whole idea with molding it and forming it is that the worst thing you have to do is trim it. You know, if you make it long, then you come back and cut corners or cut the frayed edges of it off, like right there, right? So you may want to trim it up afterwards. But other than that, you shouldn't have to do a whole lot with them. If you've taken the, the right amount of time at the setup stage to form it onto the vehicle right, then you're just up and running. You don't got to do a whole lot. You just have another piece of your model. Pop it on. And at the end, once you've painted it, uh, obviously I would paint this whole model um, I would not uh, put this on at the beginning because some of it, especially like with the camo netting, right? This is going to show your, your base layer of paint through, which is really cool. So paint your whole model, throw this on there, paint this off of the model. So if you're going to do this, paint it on its own. You can see all my skin color through there on the gauze, which is awesome, right? Then when you put it through, you can imagine doing a you know, maybe an olive drab tank and then, you know, like a beige or rope colored, you know, thing over the top where the green is going to show up through there. So definitely don't paint it on the tank. You lose a lot of the, the punch and the ability to get cool uh, effect out of these if you do so. So paint it off the tank. And when you put it on, you can glue it with uh, super glue. Uh, you can just spot super glue around and super glue it down. Like I said, once you put the Mod Podge on it, it's basically like a piece of plastic, just a thin bendable piece of plastic. So I just use super glue and glue it on at the very end of the deal. Right. I mean, I guess technically you don't even have to. You could have it be that your army has one way it, it, with camouflage and one way without, you know, because it's form fitting. You could keep these in their own and only put them on when you want to. Cool beans, cool beans. I is happy, we got a lot done. Any questiones before we move on to whip? Guardian of the Round, what is going on? Audio, what's going on? Late stream. We stream 5 to 8 on uh, Fridays. Always have. Sub badge MIA. Zulazaji, you got yours? I didn't hear your resub announced, though. Does it pop up, Zulazaji? Does it pop up at the top for you? Inquisitor again, what is going on? Thank you so much for the follow. Um, at the top of your chat... Uh, I know at least on PC, it may not show up on mobile if you're on mobile, right? But for me, it always says, hey, it's your X 17th month. And you click on that share button up there. And that's the only way that it'll alert on resubs. So. Yippers. That would be the reason, though. All right. Uh, I don't know where Kenny left off. Does anybody know where Kenny left off? I know it was there. I know, I think he showed that stuff. I know he showed that. So I was there for that. I don't know. You don't see the share alert button? Well, thank you, Zulazaji. I see, I see your sub badge, though. So it does register. So thank you very much for the support. I'm sorry it's not bouncing your name up. Twitch being twitchy. All right, let's take a look at some whip. Anybody remember where Kenny left off? Anyone? Anyone? I feel like... I feel like all of this was on Kenny's show. I know... I know he looked at these. 
Drac, you posted one. Let me know what it is, though. Alienator, thank you so much for three months. Much appreciated, my friend. Drac, let me know what it is. Because it doesn't show me your name. Ugh. I guess I can just pull them up. Shogun. Your demonettes. Uh, that's not demonettes. You posted demonettes. Aha! I haven't refreshed, so it must be here. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, so nobody's really posted since the show ended. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so are you saying the uh, Sylvaneth was yours, Drago? These? Drago, Tree Revenants for Sylvaneth, what would your advice be for staff, hilt, and harp color? Harp? What am I saying? Harp. One of them a harp? Or hair. Is that what you meant? Hair color? No, you have hair color. What is harp? Oh, is this a harp? Right here? Hmm. I like the kind of pale purple skin and the purple hair. The, um... The pipes. These things, right? Right here. I guess I would uh, I would start by, by questioning where you plan to go with the blue on the blades, right? Um, it's a very... Uh, it, the color harmonizes well with the, the faded purples that you've used on the body and the hair, but it kind of extends that out so you could either on the on the shafts of the weapons go to something that gives you some contrast and some discord kind of between the other colors um so i would not do like silvers i don't know if you plan to think about doing them in metals golds would work um and golds would set the blade apart from the skin even though they're not the same color they're close right so I would think something in a warmer tone, like golds, um, probably not coppers or bronzes, probably stick with gold. Um, that's my first assumption looking at it. Without seeing more about what you're doing with your browns, are your browns going to trend into kind of yellow browns? Where are you at right now on this model? As far as like, it looks like you got good base coats down. What were you planning on for your wood? Because if the wood is going to trend to yellows, then gold might not be my answer. If the wood is going to stay very dark, then gold is definitely my answer. That kind of stuff. Um, if you would change the blade color, you open up your a lot more options. You could do silvers and things like that if you did your blades in like greens. or. Uh, but I know you, do, you did your Necrons with a lot of greens. So you're probably sick of greens. Right? Browns are going to have grays on them like they're aging. Okay. All right, yeah, then gold definitely works. I would stick to, to things in the area of golds. Uh, you know, if you if you didn't want to do metallics, uh, you know, kind of yellow-orange palette. I don't know that I would go to reds, uh, but yellow-orangey kind of colors. Those kind of burnt or rusty colors would work really well. Oh, the blades are more turquoise than blue at your end? Okay, gotcha. It's just, it's all in that same kind of harmonistic color palette as the hair and the skin is my thing. And so when you do that, you cause yourself to have to then put in kind of discordant color. Maybe not discordant. You don't have to go, you don't have to stress like completely way out, you know, wah, colors. Um, but you want to go to, you know, either strong complements or discord colors between the, the blue, the turquoise and the, and the light purple skin. Because they still kind of share that palette, right? They're closer in relation uh, in hue and value especially. So you're going to have to pick something that kind of pops in between them. And that's why I say gold. I think the gold would look really well and you could keep the colors that you've got here just perfectly. Especially if, like you say, you're going for aged wood. 
So you're going to have like darker shadows and then like dusty gray tops, like dry bark kind of. Uh, I would I would question gold if you were going to be using like, you know, more uh, like, you know, desert yellowy colors on the wood to lighten it up. But if you're going to grays, you're fine because gray is just neutral uh, and the gold will work great with it. If you wanted to do wood for the shafts of the of the uh, the weapons, you could um, instead of metals, like using limited metals just around like where the blade attaches and things. Then yeah, you could use lighter woods. Um, Yeah, like very light tans and beige, you know, almost like raw ash or or uh, oak, you know, something like that, that had that, that real pale yellow beige raw wood color to it could work because, again, that's kind of like gold, right? That puts you into the same kind of, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It gives the same result basically. So that would be a good choice. I would stay away from neutrals. So if you're going to push them into light woods, stay away from like Aspen style, like whites and grays, um, because you need something that has its own pop to live between the blues, my opinion. So if you're, if you're going to plan on doing non, if you don't want to do metals, then stay in that realm of kind of, you know, golden light wood would work fine because it achieves the same kind of deal. World eaters, do you get pictures upside down? Some phones, when you take pictures with them, for some reason, I don't know, like on my phone, if I go landscape mode, one direction, you know, like your phone is normally, where's my phone? I don't have my phone. But, you know, your phone normally is like this. And then if, if you tilt it one, counterclockwise to take the picture, it'll be perfect. But if I go clockwise to take the picture, it turns it upside down. I don't know what it is. It's just my phone. Some, I think all phones do it a little differently. So no big deal. Oh, yeah, you can't log in. Is it telling you you're logged in or, or no? It's not even telling you you're logged in at all. I like your color choice on these, though, Drago. Shinkai, would you pay 20 bucks for this? Should I do more and go higher? Whip Barbarian. Are you, are, are you asking? Was this from Kenny's show? Are you asking me, Shinkai? Would I pay 20 bucks for that paint job? Are you doing a commission work? Is that what you're asking? That's a tough one, right? Because that's all subjective. Uh, I, in miniature and art in general, the person's perception of value is going to be dictated on what their expectations were when they first set out with you, right? If they've never seen your paint jobs and they, and they just asked you, hey, I want you to paint a model. So-and-so said you can paint pretty good. And you said, okay, 20 bucks. And then you give them this back you're kind of in a no man's land because it's like, what do they know? If they've seen you paint something and you said to paint like that, it's 20 bucks, then you have to do that. Um, if they saw something else, you know, even though you didn't say, yeah, that was 20 bucks. If they saw you paint something else for somebody else and came to you and said, hey, I want you to paint this and you worked out a deal with them, realize their expectation is always on what they saw before, regardless of what you've told them price-wise. So commission painting is a weird deal, right? It's very emotional, very subjective. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, 20 bucks is a fair price to pay for a painted miniature. I don't, I don't mind that. Um, but again, it's like, what relationship did you have with the person that's paying you already? Those are always tough conversation to have. You know, I get a lot of people behind the scenes that are always asking me, hey, I'm thinking about starting a commission business. What should I do? Uh, as far as how should I charge for my models and yada, yada, there's probably at least one a week that I answer in depth on those. Some of them are easy to answer because they're just, you know, simplified microcosm questions about that. But when it's one that's big, like, Hey, you know, I'm painting, what should I charge? Uh, is this enough? You know, a lot of it has to do on your local scene. What are other painters charging? Uh, what can they bear in cost? Are you being competitive to break in or are you saying that, Hey, my paint has a value and I won't paint if they won't give me that money. Um, you have to make those decisions. Those are just kind of common business decisions that you have to make. And in art, it's very tough because, you know, as we all know, in most cases, people don't want to pay you what you think it's worth. 
Um, and the truth is they can't, right? If I were to charge for every minute I have and every paint job I do, I'd be rich, but nobody would buy from me. So I wouldn't be rich, right? Because I can't charge an hourly rate for painting. I just, I just can't, right? I take too long and I do too much detail. So it would be thousands of dollars into a project for a lot of the bigger models that I do. And I just know people can't bear that. So you just can't charge it. So you have to work on your scale and see on something like that. I feel like that's a fair price, you know, just depends. Azrael, you brought down, you, you finally broke down and bought some commission work. There's nothing wrong with it. If you can afford it and it helps you play the game more by having your models painted, I'm a fan of it. You know, I'm a fan. Hell, Kenny, uh, you know, does uh, commissions through the, the community as well for stuff that he needs painted for his tournament stuff because he's busy painting for the stream and creating content and he doesn't have time to paint his own stuff. None of us do, right? So if I needed to have an army to play, you know, then I would, no, I would definitely consider it. Now, I, I'm not a guy that does that. I would not pay somebody else to paint my personal models. I, I can't do that. Um, but if, you were, I, if I were a tournament player and I just needed to be in this tournament and the tournament was what was important, then hell yeah, I'd have them paint my army. Paint this. I don't care. I just need to roll dice. There's no shame in, in commissioning. I mean, there need to be commissioners for there to be commission painters, and it's a symbiotic relationship. The, the issue is how do you charge? Because you may have somebody in your neck of the woods that's charging for commission paint and charging $5 a model. This happens all the time. Five, ten dollars $10 a model, and they'll paint every model on the planet for 5 or 10 bucks. It's hard for a person to break into that market and charge what is more realistic for their time um, because there's that one person who's churning and burning. Five bucks a model. Bang, 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 bang. You know, maybe they don't pay rent. Maybe they live with their mom. Or maybe, you know, they don't have the same bills and expenses that everybody else does. So for them, it's just easy money. Um, you never know. Uh, maybe they're just bad businessmen. Who knows? There's, but there can be that situation. And so that may guide where your pricing goes. And that's going to make it a struggle for you to get and pace. But the one thing I will say, do not ever charge too little if you expect to one day charge more. Right? And that's the toughest thing about being in business. If you start your pricing at 10 bucks, 20 bucks a model, and you do enough work, right? If business is good, you'll always be stuck at that price because nobody's going to feel like it's fair to pay you more for what used to be less, right? That's just the truth of everything. Now, you can gradually increase over years. Obviously, we see that in the price of milk and whatever else, but you can't just be like, you know, I started off at five bucks a model and now I want 50. You'll lose all your customers. So it's a, it, you got to plan it out. For most people that think about getting into commission painting, I tell them, you know, don't quit your day job, number one, uh, and charge what you think the value of the model is. For your, for your ability and for what you look to get out of it long term, charge that now. And if it means you only get one job instead of five, fine, do the one job. You know, you're still working, you're still making your bills, you're still doing everything else, do the one job. Be very good at customer service, have that one person love you the work that you do, then they go tell somebody and the next six people that come in, you'll get one of those. And five will go to the guy that's painting for five or 10 bucks. And eventually you'll build up enough clientele that it really only takes a certain amount of people who enjoy commissioning so that they can have models to play for you to have a side business at it. You don't have to have a million customers if you do it right. But, uh, you know, that's just the way my brain is built around customer service. I want happy customers no matter what it is I'm doing. You don't have to like all my products. I want you to like one of them and I'll work with you to find the one you like. Right. So with painting, same idea. Uh, Drek, trying uh, the skin technique and have to rewatch the VOD and practice more passes. The 10, is that 10 foot or 10 inch rule though? I'm digging what I'm seeing here. Your shading is looking really good. The first thing I look at when people are telling me that, you know, they're, they're trying hard to get, you know, new technique down for skin is how dark are your dark shadows in your muscle groups, especially for bare chested stuff like this versus your light areas. You know, yes, you want contrast, but no, you don't want your muscles to look like they're floating in pools of oil, you know, and that, you know, there's black suit underneath with, you know, pasty muscles on top of it. Um, and I feel like you've done great here. Your shadows between the, I can still tell where every single muscle is on this guy. Uh, the shading in between the muscles looks good. The coloring looks good. Um, I like it. I like everything about it. I don't feel like you've gone too pale in order to drag contrast and you haven't gone too dark in order to drag contrast. You've got your contrast by forcing your colors into the specific spots they need to live in order to make the eye work. I dig it. I think you're doing great. 
you know, from here, you could choose to then start doing things like a little bit of like the wasteland soil treatment, you know, something that gives you a little bit of blood under the skin look. I can't see, maybe it looks like you might have a little bit of pink on there already, right? Let me zoom in. I was thinking I was seeing like a little bit of red intruding into these shadows in the muscle groups, but I dig this a lot. Oh, cool, worldy. Oh, did that work for you? Yeah, that's what my phone does. So awesome. You definitely, I'll just, I'll just skip the upside down one. No shame in commissioning, says Necrosack. You pay people to cut your hair, decorate your cakes, cook your food. Yeah, exactly. It's just business. We pay for things we don't have time or knowledge to do on our own. That's what it is. And that's the way the world should work. That's the way people can specialize. If everybody knew how to do everything, there'd be no business. <laughs> you know, you just do it. I guess the only businesses would be the people that sell the materials for the people to do the stuff, right? But if you knew how to do everything, you'd know how to make the material. I don't know. Now my brain hurts. But you get my drift. Yeah, that's a very good point, Necrosec. Kilty O'Neill paints for hugs and handies. You probably just gained a lot of customers, my friend. Well, I don't know. You paint for hugs and handies. Yeah, you probably lost a lot of customers. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that sucks. Sometimes I have to go clear your account out, like log you out of every end of the site because uh, the way we don't run the cookie thing, but sometimes certain browsers, uh, the way your cache works in your browser thinks you're logged in or tries to only load logged in pages because they're in memory. So you might want to try to clear the cache, log out, clear the cache, and do that and see if that works. That works nine times out of 10. And on the 10th time, I have to delete your account and you have to set up a new one. That's happened a handful of times. But yeah, there's no shame in commissioning. I think it's, I think it's awesome. If you won the lottery, you'd pay me to paint every model on the planet. Oh, oh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? Could you just, could we just work out a deal where we paint like a couple of really big models? <laughs> I'm at the point in my life where I hate painting armies. I just can't stand it. It's a, it's just a personal, I just get bored, right? Yeah, exactly, Melty. Definitely. I think the skin is looking really good though. Again, uh, if you want to get in on this, uh, exclamation point WIP, W-I-P, we'll send you over to Slowfuse Gaming, or at least give you the link to go over to Slowfuse Gaming, our website where you can join in on the community gallery, and we'll take a look at what you got cooking. Uh, Vanilla Face, which I love your name, by the way, uh, not super clear in the picture, but you're struggling with the base layer. It's very uneven, and you end up doing more coats and covering up too much of the black. Uh, on the flesh, is that what I'm? Is that what we're talking about? Or on the green? Or I guess it doesn't matter, wherever. Um, so what happens is if you're, if you're not careful and you're building up too bright of a color over black, right, then you'll, you'll feel like it, it is giving you that uneven kind of splotchiness, hey, and then you'll be forced us. to layer it up more and more and more. J.S. Lou, thank you so much. Um, and you'll layer it up more and more and more and more and more. That's why we always build up skins from very dark flesh tones. I like what I'm seeing here, so I don't know. I'd have to zoom in if, and see if I can see the splotchiness you're talking about. But if what you're meaning is that you're just losing some of the, the black's ability to, to give you shadowed flesh, then I would say you're probably not starting with a dark enough skin tone. You're probably going over your black with too light of a flesh color. Start with another darker color so that you start building up flesh tone over your black, but it's also your shadow color, right? Black shouldn't have a lot of presence. Um, and if it's the green that you're talking about, same thing holds true. Like your green base coat here um, is a little bright. I personally would have started with a much darker green and then built up off of that. If you watch how I paint, um, you know, like I start, you know, this, this entire tank here that we've been working on, right? This guy, if I can find the right button. This guy was all started with black brown right? So cam black brown, which is a super dark brown for all of the desert yellow stuff and everything. So that that's what gives me my shading in between these areas. And as I'm building up light colors over it, as I go cam black brown, chocolate brown, uh, flat earth, middle stone, now I got four colors to get basically one color, 
right? But all my shadows built up really nice and my top layer never sits over my lightest color. My top layer uh, never sits over a very dark color. So I don't ever have to worry about that splotchiness, right? Um, I'm always dealing with, uh, if I have all the colors out here, I'm always dealing with like this, right? So I've got for this exact tank, which is a, is kind of a flesh. I mean, it goes to a little bit more yellow than, than flesh, but it was this, where's flat earth and all of this nonsense up here. Hello? Hello? Beavis? Bueller? Bueller? Aha. Here. Yeah. Like that. Right? So that my bright colors, the flat earth, doesn't have to sit over black. Right? Nothing has to sit on top of black, even though my base color was black of primer. So that my primer adds shadow to my beginning but I'm still dealing with a very, very dark color first. And I would do this for skin. You know, if I were painting skin, I might, you know, I, I would use these two as base layers for skin. And then I would, you know, uh, come up to like, say, tanned flesh off of that, you know, and then into maybe barbarian flesh or something, you know, the same way. So that the light flesh never sits over anything that's too much darker. Because if I skip these and go straight here, right? Or if I even skip, the those and I go just with my tan flesh light flesh but right over the black this is too big of a, a struggle and you'll do exactly what you're saying you'll have too much splotchy content on this it'll cause you to layer it up too much and you'll lose your shading so it's it's literally just adding more steps to the process which it, it you know a lot of people are like oh it's disheartening I don't want to spend that much time but it doesn't take that much time right it becomes very quick because the detail part of this is still in these colors these colors are very easy, right? Obviously black was your primer. The dark brown is literally all over the black. You don't even worry about it. You just lightly put it all over the black. Uh, and then the chocolate brown, you start to only build up like on muscle tops or on, on muscle groups and just leave the thin lines in between the muscles with these colors. Then these two colors are where you're doing most of the work. So it doesn't add that much time to do it this way. That's the fix, right? Is just avoid putting too bright of a color over too dark of a color and you win. Hopefully that helps. And hopefully I'm understanding what you're asking. I think I am. All right. Very nice model. Uh, AC Zona on that Legion train. Everybody's on the Legion train. I dig this a lot. Great job on the OSL. Looking really, really good on the lightsaber. This is the way to do it. So many people go too bright on the OSL and it winds up looking like you spilled paint. This one is perfect. That light red glow illuminating off of the black, damn near perfect. No complaints from me on this one at all. Looks great. Black helmet looks really good. I dig it. Very good job. Left-handed German brown. <laughs> yeah, spectacular work. Great job. Muy awesome. Uh, Azrael, what should I do with the scales? You've been glazing, uh, you have been glazing claws and spikes with blackish purple. What should you do with the scales? It's a very open-ended thing. What colors? are you looking for out of this, right? I like the purple and magenta kind of thing you got going on. Is that the plan for the, what's the plan for the skin versus the scales, right? Because generally you got two choices. You can do monochromatic like tone on tone. So you just get a darker color of purple for the scales and a lighter color of purple for the skin or vice versa, or you go for contrast and you go like bluish on the scales or on the skin and straight pink purple on this, so. Muted grays and magentas. Um, I would really say, because I like this overall magenta thing you got going, I would really say give blue a try, like glazing blue in for the shadow areas of the scales and, uh, and see what you like. Not to turn them blue, but to have them be purple with blue shading. Do I have, I probably don't, do I? 
Where is that guy? Hang on. You know our our space marine captain. He may be in one of these deals that I got here. I don't remember if he is or not. Oh, he is. Here he is. Okay. So much models not out of the box from Adepticon. So bear with me here for a second. Everything that was in the case at Adepticon has not come out of the packing. So this is not exactly what you're working on, but the same concept, right? So this guy, where I've gone for that kind of purple, it's a darker purple overall, but you can do the same thing that I've done here. You just wouldn't go as intense in the shadows, right? So here, what I've done is make sure that in those shadowed areas, right, that I've pushed that blue. Right? Not so it looks like there's racing stripes, it blends in, but it only goes into the shadows. So if you can imagine doing this for your scales, it still gives the overall view of purple. And like I said, this is more intense because I've gone for a darker purple, I think. Now you could do this, right? And I would say that on your scales, this would look really good just doing it like this, going for a little bit darker poop, purple, poople, poop, pooper, poop, 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 poop. Uh, just go for a little, had a stroke. Um, so the, uh, just go for a little bit darker purple overall on the scales, drive that blue into the shadows like I've done here so that then it sets it up for the skin to not have to have the blues. The skin can be the magentas, the purples, maybe a little bit of more of a, a reddish purple for the shadows on it so you get that blood under the skin feel, right? But something like this I think would really make it bump, right? Yeah, yeah, especially if you say you're thinking about going dark on the scales and light on the belly, bingo. I, this would be my choice. Right. I feel like this is the winner because it allows the whole thing to stay in that kind of I feel like from what you've told me, that kind of, you know, grays and, and purples and magentas is kind of monochromatic neutrals uh, tone on tone. And the blue won't upset that, Five but it'll give you some real punch in the shadows. From Ace Rilks 22. For your thoughts. Thank you so much, Adriel. Thank you, Nap. Yeah, we haven't done anything. We did this literally just for. Uh, um, for the presence of showing how we can do kind of metallic colors, you know, using that kind of non-metallic way uh, to boost up painted metals and then showing you how you can get some dramatic effect, kind of an iridescent effect on this guy from shoving blue into the shadows. It just gives it a really neat way to not have to just do your shadows with blacks. It gets boring, blacks and grays mixed with color, desaturates your color, takes it to neutral, deadpans your model. Um, you know, if you can go in and find a color that accents without overtaking the color you're trying to have be perceived on the, on the model, like in this case, I want it to be purple armor. I don't want people to walk up and go, Hey, what's the blue guy? I want it to be purple, but be like, Hey, that's really cool with the blue. And so there are ways that you can do it. It doesn't work for every color, but in a lot of cases you can, you can push stuff like this. And it's, it's really meant for, um, you know, doing those kind of monochromatic scenes where I'm, I know I'm going to have so much purple, but that's what I want, but I don't want it to become monotonous. Right? And I do want it to have life beyond just desaturated neutral shadows. So that's what I do. Bingo. I think that would work like a champ on this guy. On your guy. Right? Darker scales done exactly like that. And then the light kind of pale, uh, you know, purple magenta skin is going to rock. It's going to be great. Uh, Zulu Zaji, working on magnetic infinity bases, sidewalk... In, okay, wait. In magnetic infinity bases, sidewalk road theme. Except the dog. Except the dog. The dog is not on the road. They don't let him into the city. He has to stay on the outskirts. Because he always poops when you let him inside. I love these. These look fantastic, man. I'm really, really digging it. And great job on the ones with the, uh, the street striping. One thing I always take into consideration when I'm doing this is if I can, I change the stripe direction in, in relation to the people as much as possible. So like if you got one where the dude's running and the, the stripe is going one way, do this one, you know, perpendicular to that, break the stripes up a little bit so it doesn't get monotonous racing stripe style. But these look great. I really dig it. I love this sidewalk. That coloring is great on the flagstone style sidewalk there. I love the flagstone style sidewalk as opposed to the super high techy uh, normal infinity stuff. This looks good. Great job. I dig it. 
that's Drago. How about next week, Wednesday? I just I just sing the whole time. Would that be would that be you know like the thing that everybody dreams about, or is that a nightmare? Because I'd go like, hey sub genius, trying to get these war zone guys on the table, and I'll just sing all of my feedback. I think we have a new thing. Crickets. <laughs> Uh, trying to get these Warzone guys on the table. I think, what the hell is this? It's like freaking Terminator, man. He's got skin or not. This is awesome. Whatever this is, is awesome. I've done some Warzone minis, but they were just like as counts as uh, for other stuff. We painted some of the space rats for a guy. I like this guy, though. It is. It's like Terminator, dude. He's got some flesh, and then he's got like, I don't think this is, is this armor on him? Or is he like the Terminator? Whatever it is, I really dig this model. That's pretty cool. Nice. Zulazaji, it looked great, man. Great choice. Really great choice. Yeah, I dig this. It looks really good. Oh, the caption is on the upside down model. Cybertronic, gotcha. Yeah, that's neat. Let's, uh, I'll get the caption off of this one. Uh, Land Raider getting closer, weathering continuing, any advice, welcome. Now let's go find the one where we can look at it correctly. Bam, zoom in a little bit. Ooh, this is a good idea, I like this. That's kind of neat. Right, the the spiked track guards in the front. I like that. Take a dude off right at the knees. Brutal. I really like the tracks. Really great rust job doing the dry brushing and everything on the tracks. Looks really nice. Uh, good amount of weathering without being over the top. Uh, blah blah blah. The red looks good. You know, anytime you're doing tanks, smoothness is the key, especially on GW tanks. So many big flat surfaces. Uh, looks really good. I like it. Metallics look pretty straight on. I like it. Yeah. The heat on the end of the last cannons is good. Good detailing, man. I really dig it. I think that right now, the only thing that I would say is that you're at a point in, and probably you're painting overall, where finding a way to get good alternation and value. You'll hear me say this all the time, right? It's that that culmination of when we start painting and we keep painting, it doesn't matter. For some people, it's years. For some people, it's days. It doesn't matter. But at some point along the road, it's like you've got everything figured out. You've got really good technique. Your paint is smooth. you got all the right amount of paint in the right places. Now find darkness where darkness would live versus light where lightness wants to go. Lightness where light wants to be so that you drag more contrast, especially as you get into these larger models, right? So that my red, when I'm looking at it along the inside here, I can find really, really deep, dark shadows. Notice how the tank itself is casting this shadow here. Don't rely on the model to put the darkness where you want it. Find a way to do that on your own, right? Don't have to paint that same shape, but you see what's happening. Get your dark red to come out to where it just peaks to a little bit of bright red around here, around this rivet line, right? And then again, that mid-tone red throughout this panel, and then your bright red on top, right? And then you can you, you can start worrying about like panel highlighting and stuff like what we were talking about over the course of the last month on this uh, dust tank that I've been doing, right? I'll, I'll pop it up here real quick so you can get a feel for what I'm talking about. But, you know, basically notice how each and every panel on my tank, I take the time to kind of block out where I want to see more darkness. Uh, it's not always top to bottom. Uh, this guy, I was teaching everybody how to do panel highlighting so that you'll notice that the sides of panels are darker and the light colors draw into the middle of each panel, right? Notice here, it's got the dark that goes across linearly here. So I basically, even though this isn't technically three panels, I painted it like it was. I painted the top, right? And then I painted this strip and then I painted the back. 
because you know the paint would wear around this curve as people climbed, as it hit things, blah, 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 blah. But it's finding that little bit of darkness on there that doesn't have to necessarily be shadow. It can be grit and grime, all of that, but it puts a different level of detail on the model overall. It, I call that composition, right? The total composition of the model starts to bring more life to the subject matter because you start finding darkness naturally. Uh, in most cases, it will be towards the bottom, like on the bottom of these tanks. Um, the side spots and things, uh, and then light up top. That's our general rule of thumb. The sun's up here, the, the shadows are down low. Uh, but it's not always that way. You know, and then driving in darkness in between the panels and such so that you can bring that kind of life without having to go through um, and, and you know, be stuck in a situation where everywhere looks exactly the same. Because this, you've nailed it. You got 100% the right kind of idea. Great color scheme. Um, great detailing, great uh, conversions on here. The sp I love this, right? I just absolutely love this tank. Now, the next step on the next tank you would do, I wouldn't change this at all. I would call this guy done and be very happy with him. The next vehicle that you start doing, start thinking from ground up as to where the darkness and where the light are going to live and how can you break up some of the monotony of a huge panel like a Land Raider has and, and bring some of that in. Like, so this line that follows down the side here has a little bit of darkness, right? And on here and maybe across here, you know, normally people are like, ah, oh, you want a highlight right across there and here and here. Yeah, you do want some highlight lines on there too. But if you find a little bit of darkness, like this panel is red and then starts fading to a little bit deeper red right before it falls off the front here, then when you highlight that line, it really goes pow and sticks out against that kind of shade that you've got going. But it takes time to learn and get into that. And it takes a different vision of the model. But that's why I say you're at. I love it. A 40K conversion on a P51? Absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. I want to see it, man, because you've got it. You've got it nailed. you got great creativity going on here and really great technique to get the right kind of feel for stuff, like the rusted tracks, the neat aging on the metal on the front for the World Eaters logo. Yeah. Great. Good stuff. Keep them coming. Awesome. I love that tank. Great job. Yeah, vehicles are very daunting because there are very large flat areas or they don't have to be flat. Sometimes it's curved surfaces like around the outside of a turret, but it's just empty space. <laughs> it's one big metal panel, whether it's curved or flat or dished or bowed. It doesn't matter. It's a lot of the same. And so how do you tackle that and, and give it life onto its, uh, you know, so visually it pops when there's not much you can do with it. You can put a decal on it, you can paint some you know, weathering on it, but if you go too far, then it just looks silly. So you don't wanna have to push that much detailing on it. You want the panel itself without any of that to come alive. And that panel high, that's why I did that last month spending on uh, this dust tank and why every now and then I'll break off into a vehicle to show you how with just some simple techniques, you can make it all come alive with no weathering, no detailing, no nothing. Um, you know, I mean, like literally my dust guy, we haven't even gone to brush painting yet, other than for the, the symbols and a couple of the camouflage spots. We haven't done any weathering on them yet. But the, just through the initial airbrushing and stuff, you can get it to a point where it's 90% of the way there. So, All right. Uh, D for derped. Going to try your hand at steampunk theme, thinking mostly copper with some chrome and alloy and Vallejo metal color, dark iron on some bits. Wondering what color to use on the knight's shoulder and top armor, though. This is one of those armature. This is, this is a little guy, right? I love these. Um, okay, so mostly copper with chrome and some alloy. I'm assuming by alloy, like, you know, like steel colors is what you're saying, right? Um, aluminum and, and, you know, silver metals. And dark iron, dark iron is a great color, by the way, um, on some bits. Wondering what color to use on the knight's shoulder and top armor, though. What is your armor, your army color, right? Because the, the top armor is the where the, is where you'd put your paint. If you want color at all, that's where it's going to go. So what is the theme for your army? 
are you going for that kind of, I mean, you're saying steampunk, you could do, you could do like tans and browns to simulate that kind of leathery color. Not that you want to make it seem like it's made out of leather, but you could go with browns like I've done on the tank, you know, like desert yellow kind of colors that would work well with the metallics. It would be very muted, right? It would, it would, well, I say muted. It would be very monochromatic tone on tone because if you're going with coppers, bronzes, and then some steels and stuff, those yellow metals and then brown will kind of all come together and give it that aged look. So you could do that. Or you could go completely contrasting, right? No army color, just painting this as a, a one-off. Oh, just a one-off for the Titan itself, or for the uh, the Knight itself. Yeah, because the model's so cool. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I guess it's up to you, right? Um, it, it, well, I know it's up to you. Duh, worst answer ever in the history of ever. But I feel like it's it's a thing where you can choose to do some some muted colors, like blue would work really well in all of that, but a very muted blue. You don't want to go like ultramarines, you know, here to save the day. You want to have it be a, a dusty blue, if that makes any sense. Anything you want is going to need to be muted so that the metal, the oily, greasy nature of the metal takes front and center, as opposed to like, you know, blah, big yellow armor plates, I would think. Just judging from what you're telling me. But any color could work. Um, you know, the, the desert kind of brown, like paint it like a tank would work. Um, green would work really well. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, like the whole War Machine Hordes world lives in that kind of steampunk-ish kind of arena, right? And there's some good color combos that you can throw together with that. I'm trying to think. I had like a Signar dude, like a little rifleman or something that I had painted eons ago, but the the color scheme would work. I don't remember if I still have that guy up here or not. I feel like he's probably been disposed of at some point along the way. Perhaps. Yeah, I don't see him. Rats. I was going to say, because he, I did like a green, like a real muted kind of uh, olive drab green. Um, in and with all the kind of oiled bronze of the weapons and things like that. So the green works really, really well. Um, you know, it also had like brown leathers and stuff. So green, brown, and then all of the, the copper bronze metal is great. So you could do that. Uh, the green would work really well. I think I would stay with those kind of colors. If you're going to do any kind of armor color at all and, and think kind of old world military, like World War I military, you know, would be your best bet. Kind of thinking something along the lines of jade kind of color and you want it to look like old enameled colors like old enamel tin cups if you know what i mean really what makes things look like that is when you chip it right like it has big chips out of it like the making something look like it was enameled is is tough because what that really means is that you lose some detail right because the paint was so thick so it would look like it was plastic on top of it right so that's a little bit, it's not impossible to do, but you don't want to paint real thick, right? But yeah, I mean, I would just go for it with color and then chip the color, you know, paint, like instead of little chips, if you wanted that enameled look, you'd take a big chunk out, not huge, but anywhere where, you know, instead of across like an eighth inch of lots of little chips, you do one small chip, but just one that took the place of all of those. And that would give it the feel of thicker paint because if it's thick paint, then when it, it's not going to take just little scratches, it's going to come off in a big chunk. So that's really the only thing you can do, in my opinion, if you want that kind of enameled look. Because other than that, it's just color. But what makes it feel that way, like on the tin cups, is that the rounded lips are there because the paint's so thick, so you lose any sharp edge detail. But the model, it's going to be hard to do that. unless uh, You could sand like the sharp edges off of the model, I guess, if you want to go to that length. But I don't think it would tell a, I don't think it would be worth the time spent for the story you got out of it, honestly. I think you just do it with the color and then do some bigger chipping on it would be the way to do that. But that would be cool. Like a jade green would be awesome. A little bit brighter, but then you could weather it back down with some dirt and oil. That'd be fun. I love all the copper. I think it's going to look really good. But yeah, I would stick in the in the greens. Greens, blues, jade sits right in there. Onia, last of the brewers, full team painted. Now your only worry is they won't pop out on the board. What do you mean they won't pop out on the board? Because the board's like grass colored? Or why? These look great, man. Why would you be worried? The, the good contrast just by using the skin against the tartan. I love these, man. This looks great. 
Nice, D for derp. Yeah, definitely. When you start putting color on it. Again, just like I was saying before, make sure you start with a deep enough color, right? Um, even if you got like the scale 75 and it has like a, you know, a shade for jade and a highlight for jade, go darker than the shade, mix it with black and do that first and then build up into it. So you can build that kind of meaty, uh, shadow and grit on it. Because if you're going for that kind of, uh, you know, anytime I hear steampunk, I want it to be dirty, you know, not overly like dipped in mud dirty, just dirty because there's a lot of oil, a lot of soot coming out of it. Even if you polish it, as soon as it, you start the engine, it gets dirty. Right? So I like that not using any strong colors i feel like you are though the skin is strong you're not using any like bright wow colors like circus colors you don't have any like pink and red and yellow in there but i don't think you need it you've got great colors everywhere else your steel looks great um you know if you wanted to you could punch a little bit extra red up in here you know like you've got this kind of in i won't say i i, I want to say terracotta but i'm sure that's not the color you used but you could punch this up a little bit in the red area the wrapping along the the weapon and not, uh, you know, uh, upset the model at all by doing so. But I don't think you need to. I think these are going to look great. Again, you know, it, it, it isn't so much about hue. It's about value. And you have the highest value you need right here in the skin because it sets right against a nice low value and all of this. And technically, value at low is, well, yeah. Right? So you got good dark and then the skin pops. So all the pop on the model that you need is right here, regardless of color. You know, I'm always teaching people that if you can learn to paint based on value first and hue second, you'll get a lot better results than worrying about if you have the right bright color on there. Because I think you've nailed it. I wouldn't change anything on this. Great looking model. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Ask chat. You think this is going to look bad on the table? I think this is going to look spectacular. <laughs> Spec freaking tacular <laughs> if, if there's one person in chat that says that they think these are going to look bad on the table the only reason they're saying it is because they hope you sell your army to them that's it plain and simple these are awesome great job i love it i love it looks good yeah right yeah, everybody tell Onia he's got absolutely no fears at all on these guys. They're spectacular. Great job. Love them. I guess I should be saying, no, I think they'll look horrible on the table. You should give them to me. <laughs> will that work? If I say it loud enough and long enough, will it work? I feel like it won't work. I love them. Yeah. I would put my name on these all day of the week. Luke and Gouda. Nah, they won't look flat. Not at all. You've got just the right amount of contrast on these. Colors are good. The tartan is nice and muted. You know, you could, uh, um, you know, in your tartan, you could have put like a, that shock yellow thin line in there if you wanted to pop some detail out. But there's plenty of tartan out there that's muted like this. So it's like. You felt like the colors were not going to show on the table unless there's a strong light above? Oh, I don't oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah. you Okay, you've picked a muted color palette for everything other than the skin, right? So your tartan and your brown and everything might get a little muddy on the table, but the contrast is still going to be there, and all the detailing is still going to be there. People would have to pick the model up maybe to find out some of the stuff that you've done for all the time on the tartan uh, because it is kind of muted, but I like it. You know, it tells a good story. It works. It's realistic, but fantasy enough. Yeah, I, I would not complain about these at all. I think they're going to be great. Great Jorb. All right, that's it for us. That's it for us. I'm out. Don't gonna need food. But uh, I feel like we've talked enough yet. This is all dry. This guy's hard as a rock. All right, so all of our, our barrel... muzzle wrap we got everything we needed on that we got all the the wrinkle detailing that i wanted as i scrunched it together there on the sides so i've got good texture to it it's not just a flat piece of fabric so that worked out really well we saw me paint the one really really quickly just dry brushing and airbrushing so we've got a good tarp roll for the back i don't know that's actually going to live on this tank but i kind of like it there we'll see how i like it once uh 
once I get the, the front wrap around the barrel painted. The barrel may be enough to, for the whole tank, and I may not need anything on anything else. Um, Somebody likes us. We showed you how to do it. Alicia, what's going on? Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, we showed you how to do it in a larger surface, right? Also using the 100% uh, cotton cloth. So again, this is just a 100% cheapo $2 uh, bandana, pure white bandana from Michaels. They have them over in like the crafty craft section, um, which is pretty much the whole store. That doesn't make any sense at all. But uh, it, it just asks for bandanas at your local store. And it's like an 18 inch by 18 inch square piece of cotton. Trim it up, uh, cut it up. Uh, watch the VOD. You'll see all the tricks and tips if you haven't, uh, if you're just joining us. Uh, but this is basically now just a hard formed piece of fabric that I can throw on the model and it adds a lot of weight, right? It all sits on the model the way it should. And it's very, very easy to do and took 25 cents. I keep changing the number, but it's about a quarter's worth of, of material. My and pollute my britches with delight. Aries Apollos, what's going on? Three freaking months. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for the continued support. We also showed how to do the exact same thing, but using a different material. This is gauze, just cotton gauze from the drugstore. Uh, this is the stuff that's just meant to be sanitary, uh, uh, you know, wound dressing. Uh, so if you get a cut or something like that. But this is got a transparency to it because of all the larger openings in between all of the threading. So whereas this guy, right? has much less of that going on. You're not gonna see much of the tank color come through here unless you do something spectacularly bright like yellow tanks or something for Imperial Fists that would probably come through pretty good. This, on the other hand, right? You can imagine what you can do with this. Like even camo patterns, if done large enough, would show up through this camo net, right? So here, more of a netting kind of a feel versus a solid, you know, canvas tarp kind of feel with this guy, right? But all done using the exact same process. So you can make stuff till your heart's content. We then also showed using paper towel. If you don't want to go out or don't have access to uh, the 100% cotton cloth, you can do it with paper towel. And this one is just a tarp rolled up. It has the same, it's already dried on the top. It has the same amount of texture and wrinkles in it. The paper towel pattern went away as soon as we got it wet. And we can use that all day long. And uh, bingo, makes a rolled tarp on a tank. Super easy once again, to get some cool details and put it anywhere you want. Mold it, do whatever you want. Gonna, that thing is still, I'm gonna turn it upside down actually since it's got shape. I meant to do that last time. So at the bottom of that thing dries. And then I feel like we did one more. Did we do one more? Yeah, we did. We did this one, which again was just uh, the 100% cotton, but it was rolled to show you that, you know, you can do it on any tank. You know, this uh, Vindicator, I keep calling it a Rhino. This 40K Vindicator, Blood Angels Vindicator, it works just as well. You know, and all of these things that we're doing work just as well in a world of sci-fi uh, as they do in fantasy, uh, as they do in World War II and historic military. It doesn't matter. This technique you'll use forever on all sorts of stuff once you get the hang of it. Uh, and hopefully I presented it to you in a way that it was easy enough and comfortable enough for you to give it a try. I think you'll really dig it. And with that, we out. We'll find somebody to host this off to as I go have my Friday night uh, and find some food in the fridge somehow there we go and glue my antenna back on <laughs> take it easy world eaters and thank you guys so much if you've been lurking in the background and have not yet hit that follow button please do if you like what you've seen uh it's what keeps us going around here and we will be back here next tuesday uh, at 2 p.m pacific we do Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. and Fridays at 5 p.m. Make sure to join us when you can. Wednesdays are our Whip Wednesday where we do kind of how we ended the show here. Take a look at all your work. Uh, critique where we, where we can and help out as much as we can. Uh, but uh, have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And we will catch you on the flip side. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. We'll see you later. Adios.